After a week away, tonight we rejoin the Icon Cup Series in their 2024 campaign. From Coda one week to Richmond a week ago, and now to NASCAR's tightest traditional track, Martinsville Speedway. This paperclip shaped hot dog loving half mile is one of NASCAR's most iconic and most exciting, and it's always a tricky race to navigate on iRacing. Welcome to Pit Stop TV and the virtual Ridgeway, Virginia. My name is Andrew Cardinale IV, and I've gotten Zach Murdus alongside, and it's a pleasure to join you for coverage of the 2024 Icon Cup Series. Tonight's coverage is brought to you by Whiplash Simcams, ATVO, and CC's Business. As always, Zach, it is good to be here, especially to have you alongside this evening. Martinsville is such a cool place to go racing. I, I know a lot of leagues really hate going here. I know a lot of leagues get um, rather anxious, and, and I can get a little bit anxious with them. But this is a really cool place to go racing, whether it's real or virtual. And even on iRacing, even when you have those caution fests, it's a very compelling race down to the very last wire. And of course, if you get into those caution fests, guess what, Zach? You get to go into whatever kind of overtime attempts you have, and that's always fun. And you can see on the track map, the pit lane goes all the way around the racetrack. So you're pitting off a three, you're exiting off a two. It's it's the paperclip, as they like to refer to it, because it really just does look like a paperclip. But I think tonight is going to be just a battle of attrition, really, because you you don't really need the tires here. You can manage being out in front with on older tires, but at the same time, new tires do uh, cut through the field, especially in these next-gen cars. So I would look out for these guys to really make it count tonight on pit strategy. And before we go down track side and, and take a look at these guys on the racetrack as we speak, let's take a look first at weather conditions. This is going to be important to watch, I think. You know, we, we've heard some conversation lately about how tracks take rubber in colder conditions in the real NASCAR Cup Series. It's a little different on iRacing, admittedly, but we are still pretty cool. Down to the 70s, low 70s, in fact, right at 70.4 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in the air, only 89 on track. It's not a terribly warm day. It's modeled after what we saw today uh, in the real world. So not terribly warm, but it is warm enough to take that rubber pretty well. And I think we'll see a racetrack that decently well, I think, replicates what we saw in the, the cookout 400 earlier this afternoon. I, I think these temperatures will be, I guess, providing relatively close racing. And how about the Icon Cup Series point standings after last week at Richmond? There's a couple of changes here and very important changes at that. I will say Kyle Purcell is going to end up leading practice here at the end, but I think that was a Ross Chastain lap. Vincent Loria the fastest, then Justin Michael and Ryan Patty. And you can see where those drivers even fit into these point standings. Justin Michael is no longer in the top 20. He's only run two races, so it makes sense that after six, he would be out of the top 20 in standings. But this starts to show you we're thinking about playoffs. We're thinking about where these guys are going to go into those final 12 races to fight for a championship. You see the red on the right side of this graphic. Those are guys that are starting to get close to maybe already being out because it's just so hard to claw up there. That said, Zach, we have a lot of wildcard tracks. This is one of them where somebody can get a win that we're not expecting or even just get a big points. They go up there, finish second, third, or fourth, and grab a bunch of points, even at the stages too. And, and we have tire strategy to talk about with this race as well. Uh, but this kind of starts to... I guess, formulate our thoughts about the playoffs. And I mean, you can even see Nathan Finnegan, Brian Smith, Charles Widener, the way this is now displayed, they are 111, 94, 72 up on that cut line. They have two, three, four races of safety. Whereas if you get down to guys like Justin Bissonette, that's maybe one race, maybe one and a half races, depending on stages of safety, if you will. Uh, guys like Adam Ball, who have grinded to get up into the top 10. Well, he really only has two races, race and a half there as well. So it's interesting to start to see the kind of cushions these guys do or don't have. Yeah, there's a lot of drivers here that are in the points. You know, they're up there in the points, but they're not here. You've got Brock Hursley. He's on the cut line right now. He's seven points out from Sean Purcell, and he's not here tonight. You've got Brian Smith, who's 94 points up. Like you said, Andrew, they've got those buffer races, but, you know, missing a track like Martinsville, where a wreck could easily take out your competition, I think that's a valuable point today. You really don't want to lose tonight. 
that it is. Bartonsville is always important on these encounters, no matter the point situation. Of course, important here this evening as we're, we are still early in this season and cars are on track for qualifying. We'll take a look through some of our field as these guys get their laps in. Vincent Loria to the top of the board in car 67. Justin Michael finally back with us. He will go second so far in this qualifying session. Ryan Patty is 7th in his number 30 Chevrolet Camaro. Evan Patinko currently 12th on track. Uh, Justin, or not Justin, Jacob Gladulich will go 19th, and it looks like his run will be done. Eric Smith will go 22nd thus far, and actually, uh, Gladulich grabs a spot and goes up to 12th and bumps Patinko down. Uh, Zach Lockett, the Tennessee Titans fan, now uh, a North Carolina transplant in car 93, is on track. Brad Dell from the 72 has made, I think, some big-time gains this season, but still outside the top 20, and we're still seeing cars get on track and start to run some big lap times. Uh, so, Zach, if you're a driver, let's ride on board here with, say, uh, I've got to find somebody who's still early in their laps. Um, you know what? We'll pick Cody Neal because he just left the pit lane. What are you thinking? What are you trying to do as you leave the pit lane and get ready to do your laps? exactly what Cody Neal is doing right now. Scrub those tires in. Get as much heat as you possibly can so that way you're not sliding around on cold tires. Run it high, cut it back low, get as much momentum as you possibly can. Quick up shift back into fourth and then brake as deep as possible without locking those brakes up too much. You can see here, just missing the bottom a little bit, but we're seeing lately that even running a middle line through the corners at Martinsville can be quite quick. And I think he was not very happy with that first lap. So he's going to wind it up, do it again, see what he does on his second lap here, Andrew. Back in the cockpit and in the helmet, Cody Neal, lap one, 24th position. And this guy is now P5 in the standings. He finished second last week at Richmond to Nathan Finnegan, who was at Thompson Speedway earlier today watching some modifieds. But here we go. Cody Neal out of turn number four, down to the start and finish line. Can he go somewhere on this board? It's going 24. to be... Wow. Oh, no, pole. It took a second. There we go. Pole position. By three one thousandths of a second right there. It looks like that over his teammate. Was the, that was the money lap, Andrew. And over his teammate, Vincent Loria. That is a big lap out of Cody Neal. And now, unless this back road bandit machine can uh, move on to the front row, that would lock that front row down for that team. That is hugely important for those guys to start this race. I know they'll still have Justin Michael, Michael Milfelt Jr. and others breathing down their necks, and now Heath Smith across the line. That's a pretty respectable time. Fifth quick so far, and uh, it looks he's like... Shut it down right there. Yeah, he's going to abandon lap number two. I'm surprised by that. Uh, I but... think he realizes that he is starting on the bottom. He's in the fifth position. He's on the bottom. He's exactly where he wants to be. I don't think he wants to jeopardize that lap any more than it already is. He takes it straight back to the pit lane. Uh, that's interesting. I still would have gone for it. I mean, it's it's Martinsville. I, I would still want to get any track position I can. Uh, you have no clue who might miss a shift or who might uh, just miss turn one or turn like You you really have no clue. I still would have gone for it. But, hey, um, his choice will still net him a top five starting position. And you know what? He's right behind a couple of teammates. Uh, Heath Smith is a part-timer. He's right behind Michael Milfelt Jr. and Justin Michael. Michael's only run a couple of races, as I, as I mentioned, but Milfelt has been running the full season. So it's interesting how these teams are lining up, coming to the green flag this evening. Um, very, very important, I think, to take note of where these guys will be starting this race. Now, we do have a five-minute warm-up, Zach, and this gives us a chance to kind of see cars on track a bit more. Um, but what I want to do first is take a look at this season's schedule. And again, Kind of see where things fit in here. As we have 25 races for a regular season, we're in race seven. We still have a long ways to go. At the same time, we're now within 20 races of that cutoff. And eventually here, I think in, in April, May, we're going to start to think about these playoffs. And it's certainly by the time we get to June and we go racing at Gateway or, or St. Louis, um, we're going to be in the full I guess, playoff mode, who is getting where, and start to talk about that cut line a lot more. I think as we go on, Andrew, I, I understand what you're thinking when it's when you're saying come April, May, we're starting to think about the playoffs. But honestly, playoffs are always on my mind, even if you don't have a win yet, even if you do have a win, really get more wins, get yourself higher up in the points, get playoff points, anything you can to just improve where you are in the point standings, especially with this, you know, with this format, Andrew, it's I've never seen it before. I'm super happy that they tried something different. And personally, I think 
you should be able to use something like this, Martinsville tonight, as really not even just going for the win or anything like that. Obviously go for the win, but use it as a test session for what is going to come later in the season. Yeah, this race, this race track, it gets a whole lot more important than you ever realized. And it's, well, is it maybe more important, I guess, in the, the normal NASCAR structure where it's the elimination race? Or is it more important here as a championship race? That might be what these guys have to weigh out, right? Do you want to focus on getting better at Martinsville? Or do you keep focusing uh, on a racetrack like Phoenix or even Miami now as those are uh, tracks in the round of four? This unique format is very interesting and I think turn a lot of things on there on its heads. And consider where we're going to be eliminating drivers now. Atlanta, which is basically a super speedway. Kansas, which is pretty darn close. And Las Vegas, which is just a close cousin away from Kansas Speedway. Um, three somewhat similar racetracks. Atlanta is just a bit different now. That all bring a little bit of chaos in this next-gen car. You also have to consider Daytona and Darlington are in that round one. Then you have Watkins Glen and Bristol around two. Talladega and the Roval around three. There's nowhere to hide. Martinsville might be one of the places you actually can hide a little bit and you actually want to focus on if you can get down to that round of four. There's so many different hypotheticals, and I love that about NASCAR racing. I love that about this style of racing in 37 races, even more than the NASCAR Cup guys do. It's going to be a wild season. But cars are on track, and I think we can kind of start to uh, focus on over to that. We mentioned the... Weather conditions before, Zach, and if we take a look now, things have changed. It's actually cooling down out there, and the track temp has come down extensively. That's going to change the way this track fires off at the start of the race. Absolutely. And the cooler this track gets, the more grip they're going to have, which means I think you'll see guys start trying to break later into the corner and be able to cut that car, get it turned a lot sooner. It's, it's definitely going to provide some... Pretty close quarters racing, to be perfectly honest. But a slick, hot track, in my opinion, I think is a lot better than a cold track because it tests these guys a little bit more. It actually shows that driver skill and who can be capable at keeping this car under wraps, really, and holding on to these tires. So I kind of hope it heats up just a little bit. Just a little bit. See cars on track, nothing too specific. We do want to take a look, though, at some new paint schemes around the track around the field one of them is going to actually be not this guy in the 14 but i know it's a new paint scheme there for kevin gunther with uh zinn on board on that I, I i do love the zinn brand and what drivers have been doing with their paint schemes lately and this clearly an homage i would say to the school bandit machine of uh, harry gant in years past uh, i love the look there to the harper matching what ryan blaney ran earlier today in that number 12 car anthony deseo has had a bunch of new paint schemes he's got one here this evening uh how about some others cody eldred in a new car uh tanner dio kind of same thing there and just continuing to look around the field, we've got a lot of new paint out there, a lot of old paint. It's going to be an interesting race, and paint schemes just make it look that way. Absolutely. I love seeing how these guys express themselves with their paint schemes, and the Backroad Bandits paint scheme actually kind of stands out to me. You know, it's, it's pretty simple, but it works well. It flows very well, and Kyle Purcell's counters. What? Oh, no, he's going through the pit boxes, Andrew. Oh, boy. Having a bit of fun, maybe, here in practice. and Ooh, he's uh, over the wall. Wow. That's, that's one way to spend the back end of your warm-up session, but as drivers will get a chance again to kind of get back to just focusing on how to set this race up for themselves, this is that kind of uh, zen moment you got to have, right? Calm yourself down, get that heart rate down, and get ready to go racing. I do want to give a big shout-out, a big thank you to our partners with the channel. Of course, uh, Whiplash SimCam is a big deal for us here at Pitstop TV. Uh, ATVO, of course, the software we use to make these broadcasts possible, as well as CC's Business, a big partner. I see a bunch of you guys already in the YouTube chat. Keep that going. Keep talking to us over the course of the evening. Zach, we've got a field of 32 drivers to talk about this evening. Let's get down trackside. I love saying that trackside is so cool. And we do have a camera positioned perfectly for it right down above these cars on the grid. We're rolling off position number one and two, a couple of teammates. Cody Neal, Vincent Loria, Jimmy John Sandwiches, and Skippy Peanut Butter, your front row. The back road bandits, though, take up the next three spots. You have Justin Michael, Michael Milfeld Jr., and Heath Smith, then Kyle Purcell in a big-time sixth-place starting position before you get down to guys like Timothy Harper, Jameson Haviland, uh, Ryan Patty, and Joshua Clemens, your top ten. 
rolling through the rest of the field. Sean Purcell and Mike Jennings are going to be rolling off 11th and 12th tonight, as well as Adam Ball and, oh, I think we just skipped a row right there, but Evan Patinko and Charlie Widener in the 15th and 16th positions. Nathan Finnegan, one of the fastest drivers we've seen out here uh, lately in the 17th position, which is really surprising. Anthony Campbell starting right next to him in the 18th position. Cody Eldred and Brad Delft in the 19th and the 20th position. That's only 20 of your 31 starters tonight. 21st, Zach Lockett. 22nd, Thomas Taylor. Different drivers there than I think I would have expected. 23rd starting position, even talk of the 10 card, Tanner Dio starting off from 24th spot. 25th, 26th, Anthony Taseo, Kyle Corley. And as we get further to the back of the field, we'll let these go on by. Let's take a look at Whiplash Simcam's race details. 240 laps this evening. And we'll talk more about this as we get to racing. But 240 laps to the stage lengths there on the right. Then five chain sets of tires, plenty in the pits. Incident penalties at 24 and then every nine. And 60% fuel load. That's important. Approximately around about 100 laps, give or take a handful. Through the Geico restart zone, we will go to get this race underway. Wait for it. There we go. And we are racing at the paperclip. Out of turn four, Vincent Loria going to take the lead. Kyle Purcell way up the racetrack. One lap complete at Martinsville. And we've got a caution on the speedway, Andrew. I think over in three and four, we've got Tanner multiple Dio. cars around. Tanner Dio, Anthony DeSeo, big problems for each of those drivers. And it looks like Robert Bluen was involved. DeSeo, oh, thought he was towing for a second. Glad he didn't. Of the 99 involved there. A new paint scheme on that machine. One actually caught my eye in practice. But problems as now Loria's fastest lap is a 21.7 under caution. Uh, let's take a look back as to how we ended up in this predicament. Lap one, Bluen was actually hanging way back. Tanner Dio, I think, might have gotten turned around by either Kyle Corley or I think that was the Chrome 10 of Steve Puck that went by. And we'll get a really good look here. There was a lot going on down here in turns three and four. Watch this. Out of the corner. The Ooh, Sayo absolutely sent the 10. And that is what started the chain reaction. You see the hits right there. That was really bizarre. Um, on board of Taseo for this. I don't know if he just missed turn three. He just... He, he was Ooh. never going to make the corner with that trajectory and ends up taking a bit of damage to Kyle Corley as well. And... Uh, DeSeo ends up getting an extra piece there of car 20. I don't think Robert Bluen was involved at all. He just stopped to uh, miss it all. You see they're trying to get it going, but they're stacked up on the curb, and there's the front end damage on the front of that 16, and I think that Ford Dark Horse needs a little bit of work in the pit lane before he's ready to get back out, but thankfully Martinsville's not really an aero-sensitive track, so well, damage you say on these that. Car... You, you say that. Did I you see that. the leaders get to the lap traffic today? We don't talk about it. <laughs> that was uh, a big reason those Hendrick guys were able to get up to, uh, well, Joey Logano and Eddie Hamlin, Hamlin and Bubby Wa Bubba Wallace. I don't know why I said Bubby there. Bubba Wallace. Um, yeah, it, Dirty Air, I don't know. It's a tricky subject on these short tracks now with this NASCAR next-gen package. I, it's definitely going to matter. I don't know how much it's going to matter. But clean air is, is certainly always preferable. But... Uh, to your point, it's not going to affect much about Anthony's race if he has a little bit of front-end damage or not as these guys continue pacing under caution. And you see there, the, the nose, it looks like, is just about brand new. Did he take a fast repair? Uh, we don't have him, so that's kind of interesting that that car is as fixed as it is. Well, free rack and restack him, Andrew. Everyone's off the pit lane. We're doubled up. We're getting ready to go green. We are the virtual fans, pack in the stands, hot dogs in hand. I can't keep rhyming. But out of lap number six, out of turn number four, Vincent Loria now in charge for the restart. Cody Neal outside, back road bandits. The next three spots, green flag back out at Martinsville. 
That was a big, big checkup on the outside line. Cody Neal's going to fall in line in the third spot there, Andrew. I I question that decision, but hey, he got in line. He's in the bottom, and he's rolling forward. Letting the rest of these guys go on by, complete the first lap off the restart. Definitely stack ups all over the racetrack. Also, uh, Tanner Dio still in the pit lane. Up front, though, as you watch the first side-by-side -side battle, it's worth noting Justin Michael is all over Vincent Loria and it was very close there to turn number three. Now, Michael, he's only made the first couple races of the season. I think he actually ran, I don't think he ran Las Vegas. He might have run Las Vegas. I think it was Daytona and Phoenix where we saw the 87 car. And he was absolutely fast in each of those two races. I expect him to be one of the stronger forces here this evening again. 87 car has been absolutely quick in a couple of races he's run, now make it three. The interesting thing here though is we don't see the six car out front who's won two races. We don't see the 80 or 78 car at all in this race, Zach. The two drivers with multiple wins, not in the top 10. Finnegan, he's down, let's see, car six and 16th, and Brian Smith didn't make the call to Martinsville. Yeah, like I said earlier, Brian Smith missing tonight. It could be detrimental to him, but at the same time, you know, it shouldn't hurt too much considering the buffer that he has, but missing races, definitely not what you want to do, especially when you're in a tight points battle for the race, or excuse me, the championship. And I'm sh They do a regular season championship, don't they? I'm not sure what uh, would be awarded, but we do have a caution. Kyle Corley now in the oh, 88 car. Yeah, Eric Smith still crashing in the 79. Orly a piece of that, and there you see uh, Tanner Dio go by. He was that lap car we were taking a look at in front of the leaders, but problems for the 79. Brian Smith not here, but Eric Smith makes the trip to virtual Martinsville, and he's not even the, the cause of the caution. It's Kyle Corley. Oh, he's not by himself. No, he, he had a lot of help, and we'll go back and... Oh, Eric Smith. Oh, he got... He got uh, Betrayed by the curb, but take a look at this uh, for Kyle Corley. Down the back stretch, he's going to get sent by the 06 of Bissonette. And uh, then, trying to get back up to speed, he goes around. And then he gets going, and oh, you see the 79 right there just pops the curb and goes around. That's a weird way to pop the curb, too, because he was already straight, and then he just started spinning as soon as he came off the curb, and then see another look here at the wreck from the blimp cam that's another really bizarre circumstance uh, it's it's weird that the two crashes we've had so far are just complete sends into turn three here's a look at it from the tower this will show the speed differential out of the corner he might have let up a little bit early and then kind of braked a little early but uh, bissonette a little out to lunch there on corner entry i really i really kind of hate to say it this way but i feel like if that's the case, I feel like this will set the tone for the night with how some of these cautions are going to go. Well, here's a simple way to look at it. Uh, when you're following a big, bright green car, the objective is to not hit it. I <laughs> I, I hate to put it that way, but I, you just got to be heads up on corner entry. And unfortunately, well, he like wasn't. It doesn't look like there's any major damage on that car. It looks like this net's going to come in, top off on fuel maybe. See if he has any damage. I don't think he did, considering how much time he spent in the box. And he's going to roll right back out as the field gets ready to double up if they aren't already. Uh, I think that was topping up on fuel for, for car 06. And that's important. If we go back to the Whiplash SimCams race details, we're already unca under caution twice in this first stage of only 62 laps. We did see Joey Logano try two tires. And we even saw a couple of others. I think Ty Gibbs tried two tires. I personally... Don't know how viable that is yet on iRacing. Usually two tires and the temperature mismatch is a bad idea. But here at Martinsville, you're not going to work those right sides up too bad. And, well, that is if we keep getting these yellows and because of how few laps there are. You will can take you at least 100 laps. Well, I say at least 90. Um, Nathan Finnegan did show a screenshot in, I won't say the exact number of laps, I guess, if that's sensitive information, but uh, it was just over 90. I would say if these guys don't shift and if they save, they can certainly get over 100. So do you maybe want to just top off early and try to run this stage out to just go for two tires and get back on the racetrack? 
two tires is still sketchy to me. I, I'm oh, not I agree. entirely sure if that would be the call to go. But hey, I'm not the one on the racetrack right now. These guys are, and I'm sure that at some point they'll make the call that'll win them the race. Turn four this time by coming to the green flag once again. Loria inside Michael outside restart zone. Back green flag at Martinsville. Big restart here for the four car. Single file through most of the field now as we go down into turn three. Now Ryan Patty is there on Timothy Harper and the Bristol race winner is going to relent actually and give that spot right up to that Chevrolet. I'm surprised by that, but it is still early. That's still a lot of time to make these passes. You've got 220 laps and oh, we got cars around in turn two. We do. Lots of cars, big, big damage. I see Patinko, Corley and Blue and Stomp. I also see Hanover Fist on the top side. Oh, they're Corley still trying spun. to just get going. Oh. And Corley just spun. I'm not sure who that was. That uh, was hand funny. over fist. Yeah. Well, uh, this is so. This is exactly why I say Martinsville is difficult to navigate on I racing, and a lot of leagues hate going here because you get these kinds of crashes very easily. Just one or two cars getting together, and it kind of stacks up. And it tends to happen pretty often. I don't know what the disconnect is in particular. I mean, you can say lots of different things, but. Um, just a small one here with the 96 car, it looks like, and the 57 of Thomas Taylor, and it all kind of compounds. Yeah, I think it was really a racing incident that started this. You saw Taylor went for the spot that he saw was there, and then the hole just kind of closed a little too quickly that he was expecting, and, well, you see right here. Oh, there's yeah, a checkup. there's up. a checkup. Jinx, you owe me a soda. <laughs> There was a big checkup at that, and Patinko not able to get by. You see him stacking up in the corner. Uh, well, watch Corley here. Gets going, and boom, right there, out of the corner of the screen. Turns hand over, fist around. Adding insult to injury right there. I think Fist was able to avoid a lot of the damage. He, it looked like just kind of checked up for things, but um, here's one driver not pitting under this caution flag that I thought might. 96, all that damage. I would at least come in and make sure the four corners of the car are okay as far as the tires, but you do also see he lost a lap to the pace truck. I think I still would have come in and get that lap back later. Robert Bluen now in the pit lane in car 99. He will come in for some brief repairs. So Zach, as a race car driver, you've had kind of stop and go, start and go. Uh, how do you approach these restarts? How much more of a dire situation might it be? Die hard situation right now is looking like just, just make it through the cautions. That's the only thing you got to do right now. Track position's key, obviously, with these short tracks. Well, once you make it through these cautions, once you kind of have an idea how your fuel mileage is going to set, I think you'll be in a position where you can start focusing more on driving the car rather than making sure the car isn't wrecked. As we see Patinko on pit road, you can see the front end damage on that 96 machine. And Oh, yeah. That's... Oh, that's, that's <laughs> towed out big time. He can't even get that car turned to the left. Yeah, now I, I hadn't even realized just how much damage there was this 96 when I said I would have pitted. Yeah, um, you can see that left he just, front there. I don't know if he was waiting to see if he would get... Uh, waved by the pace car, but uh, this is awful late in the caution. I mean, they're doubling up ready to go racing this time by. I, a little questionable to me, but we'll see if he gives it a shot as we hit our 10% mark through this race. Gloria down low, Michael up top, Neil down low. That's Milfelt up top. Same structure as the last couple restarts. We'll give it a shot one more time. 24 laps complete. Geico restart zone. Bit of a stack up and a big restart again for Cody Neal. Neil in the four lets these 87 car down side by side behind him and Ryan Pandy goes up to fourth. Whoa! Cody Neal up the racetrack big time. They're three wide. 
Neil stuck up top. There goes Clemens. There goes Haviland. And Neil might finally find a spot. This is ninth position. Haviland there, the 25. He is 10th. Adam Ball goes way up the racetrack. He's going to just catch the fence. And he's going to fall back now outside of the top 15. Looks like everyone's going to get mostly single file here. Just trying to fall in line, log these laps, and hopefully lay some rubber down. So eventually these cars will start turning a little bit better. We ride on board here with Cody Neal. See how he's taking a bit of a wider line. This is what we were seeing earlier, how these drivers can really run the middle line and make something work and still hold on to that much needed speed and track position. As Cody Neal works to find his way around the 44 of Clemens. He's going to have a bumper, maybe show the nose. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Big send there from car four, and that's what he needs to do at this point. Yeah, he just went from third to ninth in a hurry, so that's back up to eighth. He's got some work to do still as... Uh, Kyle Purcell is back a little ways forward, and one car slow. It's a 73 of Anthony Campbell. That will prompt a caution. This looks a little bit like Kyle Busch from Richmond. I mean, he kept going. I, I didn't ever see him completely stop, but even once I noticed he was off pace, he kept going. But here's a look at it for the 73 car. Sideways at a turn two, locks it down. Ever came to a complete stop. The caution very late. I, you can see that the caution lights there in the foreground. That's a very late caution right there. I really wasn't expecting it to be perfectly honest. Here we go. Let's slow it down. You can see what I'm talking about here. I'll even circle it. Watch down in this area. Yeah, there you go. You see the. The light's coming into frame. Watch that. He gets still it back green, straight. Still green. Still green. And caution. The caution didn't come out until he hit the wall. He was sliding, smoking, got it straight, tapped the wall, then the caution came out. That's very, very interesting. You know what? It actually makes a little more sense. So watch it here. Watch the lights again. Same deal. He's going to release the brake, roll forward, wall contact. iRacing is going to register the slow car and the wall contact. And the ones and zeros that make this program work think that's a caution. And I, logically, once you said wall contact, it made a lot more sense. Um, it's so interesting when you break it down like that to see how the program thought to throw the caution. It's, Makes sense, I guess, when you have to write a program to consider, you know, is a slow car on its own worth it, or do they need the wall contact? Usually, you're, you think, if you crash here, you're probably going to have that wall contact. Suppose it makes sense. Absolutely. And we see 99 here rolling off pit road. I'm not sure. Did he get service error injury, or was it just four tires and gas and go? Uh, he did. He was in the pit lane for about... 15.7 seconds, but at least some repair. And where he had that damage from a couple of cautions ago. Worth highlighting is this guy, the 30, Ryan Patty. He was great at Bristol a few weeks ago. Uh, was almost a threat to win. Of course, we weren't there at Richmond last week. He was pretty solid at Coda again, so he's moved up big time in the standings. I would watch for this 30 car to be a threat again as this race goes on. And, I mean, you, you even see some others in the, in the waiting. Bill Felton this top five, Harper not far back, Kyle Purcell, um, even Heath Smith still in the top ten as he's fallen back a little bit. And of course, we have to think about that four car, Cody Neal. He's been up front for each of these restarts until now. And as we work about halfway in the stage, in fact, beyond halfway in stage one, he's out of the stage points. That's huge for Cody Neal. And he's been one of the fastest cars on track all night. Every week. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully he can make sure that he gets back up there so where he can earn some good stage points. Back to the Geico restart zone. On the loud pedal goes the 67. Green flag back out at Martinsville. Ryan Patty surges to the inside of Justin Michael. Turns one and two complete. Let's try turn three for car 30. Is trying to take that second spot away. Harper slots in the fifth. Everybody getting their spot here off the restart. 
go side by side for that second place position. Michael and Patty still working on each other. 87 outside, 30 inside. Outside line still holding tough, but I'm not sure how long it'll last here. Cody Neal, you can see in the background, down to the inside of Kyle Purcell. Big bobble out of a 12 of Harper. And there goes Neal to the inside of both of them. He's going to get Three a two wide. for one. And in the background, I can see the 19 and 32 and some others having fun. Ryan Patty, he's nosing into second. Cody Neal moves into fifth, and there's chaos everywhere. Everybody just trying to find their spot. Martinsville does not disappoint us. We've got Low cars, caution. Way. Nathan Finnegan, oh, last week's huge. race winner. Mike Jennings there as well. Those are a couple of teammates over at ECR and CCR. Nathan Finnegan won back at Phoenix and then won again last week at Richmond. Here's looking at car six. Oh, a victim to his teammate, Mike Jennings, got... Uh, I don't know that he got touched around. But we, we saw how sideways... Uh, Timothy Harper got at one point in turns three and four. He was just losing the back end of the car. Might be a similar case here for the 16. See the 16 on the outside right there. That's Mike Jennings. He goes into three. It seems like a normal run-of-the-mill corner, and then coming off four, just snaps loose, and there she goes. Not too much damage on those cars, though, so I think they'll just take it down to pit road, fix whatever they get, and be back on their way. Maybe top off on some fuel as well. I will say I, I took some laps this afternoon for the first time. I don't get much time to race on iRacing anymore, um, which is okay. But I, I, I took some laps earlier today just trying to get a feel for what these guys would have to deal with. This A-Fix setup is <laughs> it's a handful, man. Uh, we even saw a clip on Twitter earlier in the week of Malik Ray, I believe it was, cranking the wheel down the back stretch, just turning the car to the right. Not even cranking. I, I shouldn't say cranking. Turning the car around to the right. Um... Just trying to weave in between lanes a little bit, do what you have to do to race. And the car completely came out from underneath him. And that is absolutely something that happens in this car. I, I don't know why, um, but this setup is very much a handful. And we're seeing that for these guys today. It, it's like a dump truck, unless you use third gear. Um, if you try to use only fourth, you can. It's tough. I, I don't know how much time you got on it this week, Zach, but it's, it's a handful. I least. have not been on the sim since, uh, I actually haven't been on the sim all week. I haven't been on since the last Road to Pro race, so <laughs> I'm, I'm out of the loop. I have not run any Martinsville laps. I've not turned any laps in an X-Gen car in probably about a month or two. So I'm honestly about as clueless as you are on this one. Well, yeah, it's, it's a tough one to, to handle, and I think we're going to see this kind of twitchy handling for these guys throughout the course of the evening. We, we've talked about it already, uh, track temps. I thought we were going to stay more so in the daytime. It looks like we're, we're working into the evening here pretty quickly. 67.5 degrees in the air, 72 on track. That's about 10 degrees cooler. Um, no, about 20 degrees cooler, I feel like. 15 or so, 17 degrees cooler than practice. Um, so very much a different racetrack and I don't know how much these guys had to deal with it in practice or, or didn't but Harper uh, again he got real free and I think he even went down the pit lane under this yellow as Hanover Fist has parked it for the day and left the racetrack Harper yeah he pitted 15 seconds it's probably just a four tire stop get out of the pit lane and go Yeah, taking tires after about the 40 lap mark is probably the way to go just because it, it really still sets you up for the tire strategy and keeps you still in the loop. I, me personally though, I would more than like to stay out honestly. Save that set of tires because at this rate, you're going to need it for some green white checkered finishes. Lap 43 of 240 working into the Geico restart zone once again. Waiting on the green flag. Loria back on the loud pedal. Green flag back out. Patty slots back into third. Cody Neal into fifth. Jameson Haviland has moved through this top ten. He's into seventh. Lap one off the restart complete. Everybody back here jumbled around. Let's watch from the 12 car of Harper. He's back here in 27th. He's going to have a long ride ahead of him to get through this field. 
Yeah, and you can see they're fighting up in front of them, so that doesn't help with trying to gain some track position. You want these cars single file, so you can start picking them off one at a time, one by one. Move yourself through the field, get that track position, and hopefully be there at the stage end, which I believe we should be rolling up on here pretty soon. Lap 60, if I'm not mistaken, right? 62. Very close. Oh, we're within 20 laps of it, and if you watch that gear indicator there for Harper, you can tell he is shifting. If I were him, I might even not shift right here. You're in the back of the field, right around, save these tires a bit, and you can actually jump to the front of this field after the stage caution, and uh, maybe try to run the race a little bit that way, uh, to mix results possibly. But you could also even do the same thing where he just pitted mid-stage and go to the front after stage two and try to have track position for the main stage and go for the, the win later on. Um, here's Brad Delph, Jacob Gladulich, and Kyle Corley's around. Caution is out once again. That's the third caution that Kyle Corley's been involved in tonight. He's not having a good night tonight here at Martinsville. Is it only the third? There was one Bad. more. I, I recall the, the spin that he just got doored from in turn four, then the big crash in turn two. Yeah, I guess that is only caution number three for him, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I, the other two were absolutely not his fault, but see what happened here. And this is another situation, Zach. I saw a little preview of it, where somebody's dealing with this twitchy handling from this car. Once you break the tires in, it's tough to handle. Absolutely. You can see him just struggling, and there it snaps loose. And Finnegan almost getting involved in another one again. He made slight contact with Corley, I think. Oh! But no damage to both of those cars. Harper in the checkup ends up getting a piece of the wall. It wasn't big, but it was worth, uh, well, definitely worth noting as we have several cars in the pit, uh, pit lane. Charlie Widener's one of them, Sean Purcell another, Keith Smith in the pits. And let's see, I mean, they're just dotting across the field right now of who came in and who didn't. There you see Heath Smith leaving the pit lane. Sean Purcell as well, Brad Delph. That's really the big... Well, there was one more car. Smith, Purcell, Delph, and Widener. Those are the four that pitted. Zach, these guys, I think, will all try to stay out at the end of the stage. If I'm Vincent Loria, certainly, if I'm anywhere in the top five, I'm going to stay out. If I'm outside of the top ten, I, I might consider pitting on one of these cautions. If we get another one, I, I definitely think I would. Come in, get the tires. You're not really losing anything as far as stage points at that point. Because we do only pay out in the top five here in the uh, Icon Cup series. So, what would you do? Get a track position. Stay out. Get that track position, get those stage points, then come in, top off under the stage. No need to pit early right now, especially with all these caution laps. They're not really putting that many laps on the tires. I I guarantee you a lot of these drivers are going to hop down pit road, and all those tires are still going to be above 90%. Absolutely guarantee it. I think staying out for both these stages could actually be a valuable strategy. If you're able, I mean, clearly you can save the fuel with these cautions. Um, we've had, well, a few of them, up to six now for working on 30 laps. You can absolutely not, save fuel in that time. Not to mention, you can one-stop this race. You can absolutely yep. one, well... It, so it would be close not, in stage two, uh, stage three rather. Close. But if we get more cautions in stage three, it becomes a one-stop race. It's interesting that we have the six sets of tires overall, five change sets, one on the car after qualifying. Um, and you could theoretically do this race in one pit stop. Theoretically, you'd be about 30 laps short. But hey, with all the caution, like you said, Andrew, it's easy to save, easy to make sure that you can hold on to what you got. And, and I think a lot of drivers want to hold on to track position as we've got 10 to go on the stage coming green. And at that point, I would maybe even just go for fuel only, get back on the racetrack, use the time. Anyways, Nine laps to go in stage one. Green flag back in the air for Vincent Loria. A bad restart, very bad restart for the 87. Seems to be the name of the game today, Andrew. The outside line does not get going on these restarts, and they end up falling back. You see Cody Neal falling in line behind Ryan Patty, and Michael in the 87 is 
trying to hang on, but it looks like he might start going backwards here. These backroad bandits, Toyota, starting to have some faults and fall backwards. Michael Melfelt Jr. now back down to fifth place. Nathan Finnegan slow, and we've got a stack up. No, no caution, caution yet, but there are three, four wide back here. All moving around as we get closer to the stage, and Patty sideways, and Neil moves to the inside. And wow, I. What I, happened there? Where I can't was the believe he's still going. Because Patty was on the inside. Then he was on the outside going into two. Does he have any damage? Doesn't look like it. That was very interesting. We'll get a replay if we get a chance, but we're not going to cut away from Green Flag just yet. Justin Michael now chasing down Vincent Loria. Will he be able to? I'm not so sure. And Cody Neal has completed that comeback from ninth back into third, and Caution is out. A crash in the back. There's Lukrakowski. Heath Smith is in it. That's the other driver I was going to highlight from Backroad Bandits. Out of the top 5, 10, 15, 20, now in a crash. Not too much damage on that race car, so he might be able to get it back going, but definitely unexpected, and I'm sure these drivers will be able to get back going before the stage caution. Oh, oh. comes up the racetrack and... It started with Heath Smith and Stephen Tuck. Oh, Brad Delf no. gets in. One more look at it before we go and check out what happened to Ryan Patty. This is a lap prior. There could have been net code as well. What I want to look for here. He's following the corner. following Tuck and Taseo. Back, uh, front stretch now here. Watch. And an 11. Tuck yes. is down the racetrack a bit, and there was net code that hooks Heath Smith. Just an unfortunate circumstance right there. Nothing that can be done. The, the iRacing system usually tries to detect what's going on, and I, I think it expected the contact and just initiated it to begin with. Here we go. Ryan, Patty, Justin, Michael. This is how things went to Rye a little bit ago. Down the track there on a turn one. This is the lap where it happened. This is about a lap prior, yeah, it is. I believe. You see, they're still side by side. Patty is holding tough on the bottom line, not being able to take advantage of the corner exit. He checked up early to let Michael get in line. I think he realized Cody Neal was coming. He wanted to get away from that, and this is down to turn one. Neal inside, Patty on the downshift. Yeah, I think he just shifted way too early, and it caught, and the RPMs were way too high. He was going to spin out, but kudos to him for catching it and not Onboard. spinning out. Watch the gear there, down to third, yeah. Yeah, that was way too high of a downshift right there. The wheel hop. Very, very high. It's difficult to wheel hop this far with the independent rear suspension, and maybe it's not technically a wheel hop, but that's as close as you're going to get in this new car. That was pretty much a wheel hop off the downshift. Um, I, I do want to call out some drivers that pitted here real quick. Uh, Kevin Gunther, Adam Ball, they both came in, as well as Nathan Finnegan, Richmond race winner a week ago. Zach Lockett in the 93, Robert Bluen in the 99, Mike Jennings in the 16, Thomas Taylor in the 57. They all pitted in addition to Tanner Dio in the 20, who is six laps down. I didn't even think we had a driver who was six laps down at the moment. That's... And this will be the end of stage one. It's lap 61. This is now the end, very last lap of the stage. So stage points... We paid out. Oh, and we're going to go green right after this stage ends. How about that? That's really going to affect these drivers' strategies who thought they might be able to pit at the stage caution. That that came out in an untimely manner for them. So now they have to stay out, hold on to their track position. And you've got other drivers who have pitted, taking advantage of the fact that they didn't get stage points and now have fresher tires and a full tank of gas. And so the five that did get stage points, Loria... Michael, Neil, Milfelt, and Kyle Purcell going to grab stage points in stage one. We are starting stage two with all 63 laps left to go. Green flag back in the air at Martinsville. Stage two underway finally in this 240 lap race. Single file for the top five. Ryan Patty side by side with J Joshua Clemens. That's your first side by side on the racetrack. Oh, they're going to oh, crash. Patty in the wall. Radulich, it's a track a blocker. One. Almost. Absolutely. Wow. I, I'm i speechless. 
Elijah Lynch pulling a Kyle Busch right now, going backwards. He's still going straight. Is he making the corner? Yes, he is. Not the worst thing to do, actually, because you can follow the, the field a little bit until you get an opening and then whip the car around. He's still facing the wrong direction, though. And cars are still going by. You see Heath Smith. Looks like he's called it a day. Angela still. There we go. There's an Ooh. opening. Very, very close right there. There go Havlin and Patty. So I, I do believe he lost a lap. And he did. But, uh, boy, this is this is big for the 30. Ryan Patty, he had that mistake downshifting. Got back here with Clemens. Clemens goes high and just loses it down the racetrack. Unfortunate for Patty. He was doing so well tonight. And hopefully he can get that front bumper repaired, get any toe damage that he possibly has repaired as well. That's I'm going to include sucks. Eldred, Gladulich, Haviland, Bissonette, and Campbell. Really, just the next five cars behind them. And now all of our leaders will come in under this caution. Here's one more look at it, though. Ryan Patty, Joshua Clemens. Clemens just loses it, tries to lock it down. Patty's already there, and it's chaos down on the inside wall. Hate that for guys like Haviland, Eldred, Bissonette, doing nothing and just get getting a big piece of maybe a race ender for 30 uh, it's going to be tough to come back from that Lori in the pit lane, he'll work up out of the pits along with Cody Neal, Michael Millfeld Jr. and Kyle Purcell uh, where is the 87? he stays out, Justin Michael still on the racetrack, the only car yet to pit also pitting this time Purcell to Sayo <laughs> hang on, Anthony to Sayo is 5th of the car that just pitted uh, cars that just pitted. It was really a small amount of cars pitting. I'm surprised. Very surprising, really. I figured there would be a lot more cars heading to the pit lane after the stage, but James, uh, Jameson Haviland here, one of the cars involved in the caution, doesn't have a lot of damage, but taking that repair well, possibly can. I don't know if the wheels actually crank to the right here. It just adjusted. Ah, uh, that right front looks like it's pointed a, a little more to the right than it should be. Maybe just a little bit. It'll bluff out. Uh, Kyle Corley now to the pit lane. Misses his box at first. He's going to find it at some point. Or did he miss it initially? I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. Robert Bluen's in. Ryan Patty finally comes in. And that might be a race ender for him. We didn't get a chance yet to talk with our stage one winner, Vincent Loria. And I don't think it's going to happen this caution. No, it's not, because we are doubled up up front. So we'll try to get him the next caution that we get. Lap 69 now. We'll have a restart this time by on the lap 70. And we're looking for lap 125 for the end of stage number two. Well a different feel than what we had seen so far uh, so far in the race but yep. 70 lap old tires for michael about 30 lap old tires for harper 20 for the rest green flag back in the air a big mismatch up front michael fires off and away he's going to get away from this side by side of his teammate widener and harper in the 12 Harper is going to take the spot with 30 lap old tires. It's 20 lap old tires for the guys right behind, and then 10 for guys like Finnegan, who is now into fourth as Purcell knocks down the outside wall. Yeah, Michael being stuck on the outside most of the night. I think he's pretty happy to say that. Oh he's my gosh, running. Jennings! In the wall. Jennings in the wall hard in the 16. Everybody's passing him. He's got a broken part. Uh, he, he's got the rear, I think, knocked out, the right rear. Oh, oh, and Thomas God, Taylor's going to get him. Oh, my gosh. Steven Tuck. started unfolding from the start from turn two. And you can see there, Jennings just trying to get it back going. The 73. He's got a little bit of right front damage. And there you see Thomas Taylor. He's got massive right front damage. Bad insult to that injury. Uh... Mike Jennings got turned around by a car that got hit by somebody else and wasn't even on the lead lap, and now he's got to wait for everybody to go by. He's better off reversing right here and trying to get back going that way in a three-point turn. Not going to do it if you 
stay there, yeah. There's the gap, fine. After the whole field goes by. Well, this was turn two for Jennings. Got loose. Lockett gets him. He goes into the outside wall. So that's Mike's own doing, unfortunately. And it looks like it broke the rear end of the car. He's going to come around. Oh, Taylor locked up into the corner. Campbell hits him here. And the overcorrection oh. from the 57. That's just more damage to that 16 of Mike Jennings. And I don't think he wanted to see that at all. He's definitely been a good competitor tonight. He's been able to run with them. Stay up front for a majority of the night. Just unfortunate circumstances that unfolded for him right there. And you see Loria right here. He's going to be able to take advantage of this. Quick caution. Get a few spots and move up through the field a little bit more. And we will grab a hold of our stage one winner. A couple of cautions late, but that's okay. A couple of uh, yellows after the fact of Vincent Loria. You're our stage one winner. R67 clearly uh, doing things you need to thus far, but you're caught back behind guys who are on old tires. How's that dynamic so far? Yeah, it's it's been fine. I'm, I'm can't lie, I'm a little bit unhappy with how things played out there at the end of the stage. Uh, that should have been the stage on that first caution. So we had a couple cars pit, uh, either when they shouldn't have been able to, or I should have been able to pit as well. Um, so it cycled some of them in front of me, uh, and we ended up running an extra lap at the end of the stage. So I don't know what was going on there, but I'll, you know, try to try to deal with it by just picking these guys off. Uh, thankfully, I, I almost got involved in something there, but was able to dodge it. So uh, just try to try to keep avoiding the incidents and move my way up. Of course, we get somewhat limited information here. Did you get the stage win? Yeah, so I did get the stage win, the, but the there was a caution there, I believe, on lap 58. Um, and you pace around more than, uh, you know, four times here under a caution. So uh, it should have been the stage called there, and I should have been able to pit and still have the stage win, pit from the front of the field. Um, but instead, they didn't call the stage, so then I had to stay up front to run around and get the stage win. And then some guys behind were able to stagger the pit stops when it should have been just me leading everyone down the pit lane. So not sure exactly what happened there. Not not too happy about it, but it's not the end of the world either. I'll just uh, keep, keep on driving the car. It somewhat works out, right? I mean, everybody in front of you has got older tires. You have a few guys behind you on newer tires. I mean, your teammate Cody is back there, but for the most part, it seems like a little less pressure out front or out behind you. Just go and pick these guys off one by one. Do you still want to pit here at the end of stage two? Or are you going to try something and considering you can't go from the end of stage two all the way to the end of stage three without something happening, fuel saving or something? I'll probably just pit and try to win it on speed. There you go. That's it, Laurie. Yeah, we're coming to the restart. We'll get you back down to it. We appreciate your time. Thank you. He goes back up. Justin Michael going to lead us to the green. Timothy Harper on the outside. And it's Widener and Finnegan back green at Martinsville one more time. Harper trying to get down. Widener fills the gap. And the 12 car is going to lose second spot. Yeah, they were having none of that. Harper was able to just get it. Excuse me. Harper was trying to get it to the bottom. Widener said, no, thank you, sir. I'm just going to sneak on through. And it looks like Harper is going to lose more spots as the bottom continues to open up. You've got Finnegan right there Whoa. behind, but it looks like they'll get in line. Crossover move. Harper. Still fighting Fine. for second, second here. Back. Yeah, still fighting for second. Big crossover. Widener now on the outside. Finnegan there trying to fill the gap. Uh, I don't even know what just happened with the 95. He just absolutely missed the corner, and Harper took advantage as Michael is run running away by a second and a half, and then some. Loria, meanwhile, is trying to get through this mess. Uh, he's here behind Brad Delph and Adam Ball, and there's nowhere to go. And we got a caution on the speedway. Another one. Thomas Taylor again. Oh, big and damage. Gladulich rolling on through. Thomas Taylor again. That right front disconnect, he's done for the day, Andrew. That is his race. Oh, my goodness. That is some big damage to that 57. Got a good look at it there. This is maybe a better look just because you can see how far that right front is towed out as it's disconnected. And he's, he's not even on the ground like when he gasses it up you can see it right here it comes up a little bit and then once he gets on the brakes the front end just dips down a little bit more than it should you can really tell that chassis is uh, it's no bueno oh, oh. comes up oh glad you oh. no oh 
I can definitely say I, I wouldn't have tried that, I don't think, if I was Jacob, but I, I see what he was doing. Um, here is the, the incident back. Thomas Taylor. Watch the white and yellow 79 coming up. That's Eric Smith. He's slow on the top side. Taylor tries to get by him. Wasn't totally clear. Modulus just goes to the bottom. and I think... There's a little bit of blame that can be placed on both drivers there. I think Wadjulic could have maybe stayed higher instead, but at the same time, I think Taylor could have locked it down a little bit better instead of rolling backwards right there. Caveat there is his rolling down out of harm's way. Traditionally, Gladjulic went down to try and miss it, and, well, a lot of crashes will go high and then back down the end of it, but now Gladjulic is in the pit lane, and... I'd say he's pretty well done, just like Taylor. You see Taylor go up on the jacks, actually. It's interesting that they got service to that car so quickly, but it's going to be a while before he gets back out. If he even gets back out. I mean, look at that right front. Yeah. It's destroyed. Rough day then for the 57 car. Of course, he was in a couple of cautions before. Tough day for sure as Eldred tries to work on his damage on the 32 car. Rough day there as well. Also, I've seen some stuff recently. Cody Eldred doing some big time work with uh, Opmo, Operation Motorsport. We used to carry their sim racing broadcasts, and I do miss those day for sh days for sure, but um, Operation Motorsport doing some big stuff in motorsport. Uh, funny enough, I guess, but he has been going to the racetrack with these guys, going to places like VIR, I think uh, Watkins Glen, maybe, or the summer last year, maybe Daytona, uh, all over the place. I've been seeing posts on Facebook, just uh, really cool to see Cody Eldred getting into that program, and I don't know the specifics, if he would classify as a beneficiary in that group, if he's maybe a uh, former service member or even current. I'm not totally sure. I might have to ask him one of these days, but I just know he's involved with that group, and it's good to see that logo back around the racetrack for us at Pitstop TV. That said, we are 40 laps away from the end of Stage 2. Green flag coming. Michael inside, Harper outside, then Finnegan and Widener. Not much has changed, although Finnegan blinks. We're back green. And Harper is able to fall in line this time. Be able to take advantage of that. Finnegan spots in line in the third. They're single file, top four. Ryan Patty still on the racetrack. He's trying to find something back here. He pulls to the inside of Lockett. Purcell and Gunther racing. Gunther gets off speed and... Jumps back in line. There goes Adam Ball to the inside of the 19. Misses the corner almost. The 31 trying to find something, and there's Vincent Loria. Gunther going to get in line. Oh, Purcell, a big, a big catch. They are just having trouble, we'll say. Yeah, everyone's having trouble trying to find ways to move forward, and a lot of these cars are putting themselves in the wall, to be perfectly honest, as we see... Three wide, coming off a of turn number two. Car in the wall, inside. That Bill was Felt. a heavy, heavy hit. Daytona winner, and he's going to go straight into turn three. He just keeps he's the car got, on the racetrack. He's got major damage. No front bumper. That car's probably towed out a ton. Up front, Adam Ball having a lot of trouble. He's Bill moved up the standings backwards. recently, but Cody Neal goes by. There goes Ryan Patty. I think Ball might have gotten the wall. There goes Eldred. They're not Eldred. Corley deep into the corner. And Corley Ball big risks. has gone from the top 10 now to just trying to hang on to the top 15. DeSeo misses the corner. He goes up the racetrack a bit. Corley, where is he going? Art in the inside wall. That is likely to be a caution. Oh, uh, no yellow yet. Bumper go bye-bye, but Bumper is still on car. I'm... A little dumbfounded, honestly. There, there goes uh, Glandulus back into the pit lane. I don't know what's happening anymore, but let's move back up as Milfeld has pulled off the racetrack. And Cody Neal works here on Kyle Purcell. Contact. And look at Patty in the top 10. Still with no front bumper. Didn't I tell you, Andrew, that Arrow's not going to be a huge problem for these cars tonight? I'm blown away. By what's happening in this race currently. Gunther kind of like to the inside the there line. of uh yeah uh, of Sean Purcell here. This is insane and oh, big, big block. 
That's not even for stage points. That's just for racing. And Patty's rolled himself back in. How is he so fast right now? As Loria takes advantage, gets past Harper for the third position. Finnegan two seconds behind Michael. Seems like they're starting to get a little bit more spread out. Neil's going to go. go for it again. He is pulling all the fakes. Goes to the outside. Crossover. Crossover move. On the bottom. Out of two. You see cars coming off pit road. Coming back there. Patty to the outside. Cody Neal, I think, is going to give a bump to this 04 at some point. We don't get too many blocks like that as Patty is just moving around the outside. Purcell well, blocks there. There's a caution shot. Caution, yeah. Speedway. And it's funny that the caution comes out right there because Neil just came over the radio and told Patty that, hey, if we're going to go, we need to move him. So that, that was interesting to hear as the caution comes out on the speedway. Going to involve Evan Patinko racing here with Joshua Clemens. And how does this all happen? Oh, he gets free out of the corner, got the curb, and goes for a spin cycle. Campbell comes up, caution's already out. There's Eldred, Corley, and others. And I hate that that's what ends up spoiling this uh, fantastic run we had going. That was amazing stuff. Chaotic, don't know what was happening at all, but amazing. There's the move. Into three and four. He, he tried to diamond the exit and just got the curve. At least it was one car. Oh, almost got two, three cars right there. It's respectable. You know, he, he was going for a racing move, trying to go back at the 44. Unfortunately, made a mistake and went for a spin. Now, Justin Michael here. He's doing what we were talking about, Zach, trying to stay out these couple of stages with how many cautions we've had, how many opportunities he's had to save fuel and save tire. Sure, we're on lap 98 now, but he's probably only run about 40 laps green flag. Let's see, where's the uh, where's the graph? Here it is. Uh, yeah, about 40 laps green flag. Yikes. That's a... Uh that really as well we've but it opens the strategy oh. up and i you know again i i mentioned it earlier yes you can get caution fest races here but they are still compelling for reasons like this doesn't matter how many cautions you throw at us there's always going to be something to talk about we got some good fun laps in there the field mixed around and now you have three I'd say three of the best drivers in the series on the back end of somebody who has now run a hundred laps, technically, on this set of tires. This is going to be a very compelling 25 lap or so run to the end of stage two. Do we see over or under three cautions before the end of the stage? Hopefully none. It'd be real nice to run these last 25 out and see how those tires can hang on. Now, with the advent of stage points, and the fact that Kevin Gunther is the last one to have stage points right now, we got Sean Purcell, just ahead of Ryan Patty and Cody Neal, who I think was ready to send that 04. I don't know. We're restarting here at the end of lap 100, though, leaving on 140 to the end of this race. 25 exactly. Hey, how's that for a guess? 25 exactly to the end of stage two. Everybody is going for that top five. Everybody is chasing that 87. I would not want to be Justin Michael right now, despite the fact he's leading. I would not want to be the one in that set of shoes. Waiting on the green flag, iRacing pace truck back down to safety. Barney holding the green silk in the air. Green flag back out at Martinsville. Big restart from Loria and Zach. Here's where the chaos unfolds. Purcell gets clear of Gunther. Yeah, they just sent every one of those cars in the corner going into three. I thought a few of them were going to try to go for some moves, but it looks like they're going to be a little tame. I say that, but Purcell almost gets ran through going into the corner by Gunther. Right on the bumper of Spinnigan. Trying to get past Loria right here. 
side by side, rolling into three. I think Loria sees what's going on. He's not going to fight too hard. Don't waste the tires. Single file coming to the start finish line. Loria's technically got better tires here, so absolutely sit back and save your stuff and just get to the end of the stage. Meanwhile, Here's Purcell hanging on to those stage points for now. Here comes Gunther, big block out of the 04, and the 31 is going to pay for it. He goes for a spin. Caution again. Gets out of the way, though. No other cars involved from what it looks like. So that's a pretty simple incident right there. Now, I want to open this statement with absolute, complete respect to uh, Sean Purcell and what he's doing here. Because Zach, what he's doing is, is racing. He's absolutely entitled to do what he's been doing, make those blocks. The caveat, however, is your subject to being pushed into the corner and maybe moved out of the way. I'm surprised they haven't hit his bumper harder yet. And Gunther here, I think, was trying to mitigate it. He had it. the corner right there. <sighs> he had the opportunity. The space was left open. And I think the heavy block right there just kind of threw him off. Watch it here. There was just enough room if he wanted it. Hmm. Can we back it up a little further? And that's what we'll go for here. Watch from Gunther's perspective. Watch the shimmying down to the inside line, especially this one. This is a lap prior, so this is not where the spin happens just yet. Watch the 04. He kind of shimmies down a little bit on entry. He sees it. Right, he's mirror driving 100%. Gunther is going to have a shot here down the front stretch. The 04. Well, he, he didn't have to do much blocking there, but then this is where the incident happens. And this he is a big see, block. You could see right there that Purcell got up off the corner a little bit higher, and there's the block. He just shut the door. And it wasn't now, much. It wasn't much. He just faded over a bit. It's the Pruitt fade. On a normal racetrack, as in, like, if they were racing at Martinsville today, like, in the NASCAR Cup Series, you would have your spotter in your ear telling you, bumper, looking low, he's on your bumper, he's coming to you, so that gives you the mindset of knowing that there is a driver who is taking the lane, and he's going to be there when you enter the corner, and that you should expect it. The spotter on iRacing doesn't necessarily tell you that. So these drivers tend to get a little bit more aggressive as Loria blinks back into screen. They get a little bit more aggressive on where they throw their blocks going into the corner. And I think sometimes drivers need to take it with a grain of salt and realize, hey, I think this guy's faster than me. Maybe it would be smarter if I just leave him the lane if I already know he's going to be there. I look at it as this. Um, block all you want, and I think it's fun. It's exciting for us. I'm not knocking Sean Purcell at all. Um, but your bumper is going to get used up. Now, Neil on the outside is, is going to change things up. This is going to be interesting as we're going to have less than 15 now, or less than 20, rather, coming up on 15. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. This, is, this has been a wild race so far, not even halfway. Justin Michael controlling this race restart again. Nathan Finnegan on the outside for it again. And it's Loria, Harper, Purcell, and Neil, your top six. Green flag back in the air. And Purcell absolutely missed the restart. Wrapping around turns one and two. Loria back in front of Finnegan. Purcell Patty's at the racetrack there. Patty's now to the inside. Here we go. Oh, and the other Purcell tags the four. He's going around in front of the field. Wow, oh. and he gets absolutely clobbered by a teammate in the middle of the racetrack. It's junk. This is where you get short track racing. You get tempers. Man. One of the fastest cars in the racetrack. Started this race from pole. Remember back, way back when. He's going to end this race in the garage early. That's just a terrible ending for a car that had so much speed and so much potential tonight. 
Racing with one Purcell. The other Purcell gets him down here in three and four. So watch this. John up the racetrack here. The shift backs up to the four car. Cody is going to then kind of sit back, try to slot in. And Kyle gets him there. Just drives into the left rear, unfortunately. And sends the four around. To Sayo here. Mm. I... Got to be a bit more heads up than that. This is short track racing, Zach. I mean, th this is the product you get, and this is the onboard from Taseo in all of this. He's racing with guys like Anthony Campbell. Slow out of two. Nobody really that close behind him. One car to, the, to his outside, though. This is his view. Oh. There was never much room for him to go anywhere. The only thing he could have done was uh, slow down a bit more. Definitely. That was... There could have been a little bit more of a check up there. And now we see drivers coming off a pit road. And the Purcells both just pitted. Sean down and away. He's 18th now. And Kyle is... Uh, 19th right behind him. I'm actually pretty surprised that the 01 isn't further back with our lead lap cars. I, well, I guess he is at the back end. I, I would have thought, though, that... Well, I guess Patinko's in the pit lane, so that'll do it. And uh, Taseo is catching up. So I, I think the 01 is going to go to the rear for the caution. I don't think it's exactly debatable there. How bad is it for Cody Neal? Ooh, it's looking pretty bad. Look at how much he's cranking that wheel just to turn it left. On right front's junk. Well, up front, Justin Michael is still your race leader. And, Zach, we're going to have, it looks like, 10 laps to go or so when we get this green flag once again. Games are on. I mean, 10 laps to go on the stage at Martinsville, and oh, look who's fourth. Wow. I mean, fourth, fifth, sixth, it's it's all just insane how these guys have gotten here at this point. Ryan Patty has no front bumper. He's fourth, and by merit as well. Uh, Timothy Harper, uh, rather Justin Bissonnette in the top five now, where he's been in a bunch of crashes, it feels like. He actually was in a couple at Richmond as well. The crash is here today. And Brad Delph has been in a couple of those big accidents as well. And he's up here in sixth this restart. Then wide to red Lockett up here. Bluen is going to restart from 10th. It's going to be a wild one. 10 laps to go in stage two. Green flag back in the air. Really, really bad start from Nathan Finnegan right there. Oh, he's going to get oh, tips. Contact. Harper got him. There goes Patty. There goes Bissonette. Delph gets turned around, but it keeps it going. Three wide to turn three for the third spot. Absolute insanity. And Justin Michael has been able to drive away from all of this. As soon as the 67 and 4 were out of the picture, this guy took off. The fact that Patty is in third position, Andrew, that is so shocking to me right now. Well, he's got better tires than Nathan Finnegan. Harper's on older tires, though. It's 78 laps for Harper, 44 for Patty, 59 for Finnegan. So with all these cautions, everybody's on some kind of different strategy. Patty, man, he's free. That car is not 100%, but it's probably at least 95. Just about. Mechanically, anyways. I don't, I don't know about... Uh, I guess aesthetically, no bumper. That's that's definitely a look. By the way, Bluen who restarted in tenth, he's down to sixteenth and getting passed up by Vincent Loria, who pitted under that most recent caution flag. So he's moving through the field as Ryan Patty is back in the inside wall and pitting. Wasn't meant to be. Just unfortunate. We didn't catch what happened, of course. Uh, but we'll get again. We'll get a look back if we get the opportunity. This is green flag though for the end of stage two. Michael Harper, Bissonette, your top three. I don't know how 
the 06s up here, but then Finnegan's fourth, Lockett's fifth, and that is your cutoff for stage points. The next battle behind that, you've got uh, Widener and Gunther, then you've got Ball and Clemens here. This is for 8th and 9th. Side by side, turn number four. Looks like they're going to clear each other. Get single file, and there's the caution, which I believe is for the stage. Is it? That's... That is it early. should be, isn't it? I've got... I, I can hear people over the race chatter asking if this is going to be a stage, so... So that likely... confirmation here. Was the admin thrown? That shouldn't be a stage yet. It should have been at 125. It was not admin thrown. So, uh, we are looking, but Nathan Finnegan has just confirmed to us that that is going to be the stage caution. Well, here's an overlook of the whole track be able to watch for where a car stops. Oh, Kyle Corley, the 88. You see it there on the front stretch now. Kyle Corley once again. He goes for a spin cycle. I think oh, we'll get a quick look and then go to pit stops because everybody is in. Corley going to go around all on his lonesome and oh, Tim Bluen gets a peak. Well, Pit stops for just about everybody. Justin Michael finally comes in. He's going to get service in the 87. He's not alone. Harper, Clemens, Bissonette, just about everybody else out front. The drivers staying out are Adam Ball, Sean Purcell, Cody Eldred, Vincent Loria, Al Purcell, and Evan Patinko. There goes Michael, followed by Harper, Bissonette, and everybody else. So Justin Michael is our stage two winner. Back Road Bandits have certainly made their impression today. Let's grab a hold of driver 87, properly this time, under the stage caution, and talk to our stage two winner. Uh, Justin, uh, it seemed like you were the only driver in control of stage two there. How did it go for you? Uh, it was good. I mean, the tire wear was really good, and uh, I threw in before all the cautions. We had never made it on fuel, and I don't know. We were still turning nines. Uh, and pulling away from everybody, so I thought it was the right move, and it did work out for us. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot to unpack in this race so far, but this is the first time that you'll be back in the mess since early in Stage 1. Uh, is there any kind of measured approach, or is it just hang on and try to get back out front? I mean, at this point, it's kind of just hang on with the with all the cautions and stuff. You gotta kind of got to get what you can get and try to get past guys, so 67 is going to be really hard to pass, though, so... And of course, that was a bold strategy to go out and keep those tires on the car. You said tire wear was good, question mark. I mean, do you think that's a possibility again here in stage three? Because it's not all that far off to save the fuel and go for it. It's not. Um, I mean, we'd have to have a lot of yellow, so we'll see what happens. Um, that's why I, another reason why I didn't pit earlier. I figured these guys, they probably won't be able to do it. I think I only had like two gallons left, so it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting, especially if we get a couple uh, longer green flag runs. Justin, good to talk to you. And you know what? It's good to see you back on track. The two races yeah, you've we, run so far, you've been absolutely fantastic. It's good to have you back. I appreciate it. Yeah, we missed some races there. Just uh, we were sick once, and then I just couldn't get home in time for a couple of them. So we'll, hopefully we're here for a while longer. Well, good to have the 87 back on track. Justin, best of luck. Thanks, man. It was a shame to not see him for a couple of races, but it is good to have him back here as we work up to 110 to go. It'll be 112 with a green flag. Adam Ball in control for this restart. Then, Sean Purcell. That's, who's that? Cody Eldred in third. Vincent Loria fourth. Kyle Purcell, your top five. Green flag back out. And a terrible restart on the top side. Loria straight down to the inside of Sean Purcell in the 04. The top line has just not gotten going all day today. And drivers continue to struggle on that outside line. And I see one Bissonette car backwards. slow. That's the 06 way up high. Lock it. Delph gets into Clemens. And they hang on on corner exit. They do. Just. And look at this. Loria to the lead. Adam Ball drops out. Sean Purcell moves back. And that puts Justin Michael in second. Third, rather. Look at Adam Ball trying to go after Loria. There's Justin Michaels taking a look to the inside, and he is getting clear going into one. No, they're still side by side. But it looks now he like gets it. 
Yeah, Adam Ball realized what he needed to do there and get back in line and not fight too long as see fighting going on throughout the top 10. Harper, Finnegan, Purcell, all super close to each other. Purcell on the outside of Finnegan trying to make something work, but I don't think he's going to last too long up there. But again, down low. And Justin Bissonette has fallen all the way back and taken to the pit lane. He's got some suspension damage. Unfortunate day for this league's Ross Chastain, as we've talked so much about. But as we approach 100 to go, this is the first time we've seen the 67 in front, I think, since the stage break at the end of stage one, or shortly thereafter. So finally getting some laps back out front. He's got 67 led so far, matching his car number. Yeah, and you can see Justin Michael is right there in his mirror. He's closing in a little bit, not too much per lap, but definitely enough to make a difference as we roll through three and four. He actually lost about a tenth right there. So he's trying to see what he can do right now, but I don't think Justin Michael is too worried about burning up the tires. He's just logging laps, seeing what he can do. You've got oh, not even 100 laps, about 90, 85 laps to go, really. As caution on the speedway once again. 105, I'll correct you there. It's the 06, slow out of the pit lane, I think. Only car that I see out of line. By the way, Ryan Patty has called it today. He's in the pit lane. Uh, e 06, rather, I think was the slow car that is credited with this caution. Seems Leaving the pit lane. He would be credited with the caution. Well, let's take a look from the uh, camera. No, it wasn't him. Turn Not four. Widener, maybe. It was. Looks like he just snapped sideways and put it in the wall, but might have had some help. Oh, yeah, he Brad Dell help. for Brad 72. Oh, a lot of damage. Still buff out. Super rolling. You know what, Zach? That probably wouldn't have been a caution that's in the wall. Like earlier. You're probably right. Just like that Everything caution with, uh, with Campbell. Absolutely. It's been... An interesting night to say the least. Speaking of Campbell, there he goes. We've also got Patinko in the pit lane, Bissonette, Vladulich. You see Gunther there in the background. And Cody Neal. Oh, he's not pitting. Harper is. That's the car I saw in the foreground. Harper's in. He's taking service. He's been great tonight. Trying to match that run he had at Bristol a few weeks ago. Uh, but Cody Neal, interestingly, is now you see out of ball pitting. Uh, the four is in the top 15. He is going to pit here, which is going to change things up a bit. He's back in this race. I didn't think he would be. He's still got a lot of damage, but uh, he's managing it well. Do you see his wheel right now? Am I the only one that sees that wheel? <laughs> yeah, back in this race might be a stretch, but he's, he's doing his best to manage it and He's got a long way to go from the pit lane like that until he can finally get there and get some service. You can only hope, right? Only. Can only hope. Unfortunate day for Cody Neal. It, it just... It's been race after race, especially when we're here, it feels like. Because he had a great race. Finished second last week at Richmond. Of course, we're back. Exactly. And I... I don't know. Maybe we're his bad luck charm, noticing that he's been fast. Maybe we need to uh, not say his name next week out at Texas Motor Speedway. Which, you know what? This is a good time to go ahead and talk about it. As uh, we're getting some fog rolling in to the foothills here of the Appalachian Mountains. But let's take a look at what's upcoming at Pitstop TV. Thursday, April 11th, later this week, we head out to New Hampshire Motor Speedway with the Thera Pierce Fleet Service Series. Icon goes racing at Texas in a week's time. And then we go to Slinger with those same super late models as we take to New Hampshire from the largest track to the smallest. That's going to be a wild ride. And in between, we go to NASCAR's biggest juxtaposition. The flat turns one and two and high bank turns three and four, turns three and four of Texas. I prefer the old Texas, but that's just me. I'm sure a lot of other people prefer the old Texas as well. I'm sure you prefer the old Texas, Andrew. You know, I don't really have a preference, actually. I never never got along in my very short driving career. Never got along with Texas Motor Speedway for some reason. Uh, great it's race track. up anyway. Oh, man. Great race track at times, and that certainly has given us some great moments over the years. 100 laps to go on this restart. 
That's Loria out front, Michael second, and a bit of a jumble in row two. Green flag back in the air. Nathan Finnegan going to go by Sean Purcell here to turn three. Maybe not. Purcell dives into the corner, now way up the hill. And out of turn number four, he's still alongside. Cody Eldred up in the third spot, worth noting for the 32 car. As now the Purcells are nose to tail, Sean over Kyle. Brad Delph in the seventh spot, Zach Lockett, Joshua Clemens, Robert Bluen will complete for top 10 as we run. Kevin Gunther in 11th, then Timothy Harper, and then we get some guys moving all around. Adam Ball is back here, Cody Neal fires to the inside of Eric Smith. And how is he managing all that damage, Zach? Look at this. I don't know how he's doing it. This is just bizarre. Impressive for sure. Uh, Cody Elger will get overtaken here for third spot. Nathan Finnegan goes on through. Michael, though, as these laps wear on, I think is starting to show he's got some pace. But Zach, he talked about it when we spoke to him after the stage win. He knows Loria can't go the distance. So if Michael can save some fuel here, he can potentially go the distance. He doesn't have to worry about that 67 if we get a short amount of yellows here. Uh, Vincent has to pit. We know that. Yeah, I think fuel saving might just make a break the race, to be perfectly honest. Especially if they keep going green. Like, we have been having quite the green flag run here right now. Oh, and... hush. Hush, hush, hush. Knock on wood. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have... Actually, wait. Hold on. I don't know if you could hear it, but I have a wood nightstand, so I knocked on wood right there for you. But I think it's possible to see this net coming out of the pit lane right now, and it's if you can save the amount of fuel that you need with the last almost 90 laps to go, maybe you just might be able to make it to the end of the race. You would have had to pit, though, at the end of stage two. And there were a handful of drivers that did. Uh, Finnegan's in that boat as well, so Michael and Finnegan both. Um, could potentially try and do it. Delph, Lockett, and Clemens are in that boat. Gunther has pitted since. Um, so really, the only drivers up front that can't are Loria leading, then Eldred in fourth, Purcell, both Purcells, uh, right behind in fifth and sixth. They cannot go the distance no matter what. But if we get some cautions, well, caution. <laughs> Look at that. Adam Ball on the front stretch. And field strategy out the window. No, no, no. Not at all. This is exactly what Michael needs. He needs a couple more yellows. He's not good yet. He, he needs to keep saving. And it's okay if we get a bunch of yellows because he knows those guys around him still cannot go to the end if they have not pitted since the end of the stage. True, but you can pit here, top off, have the fuel that you need to make it to the end of the race. And then we get more cautions. There you go. You're saving fuel for green-white checkers. Look here at Adam Ball out of turn four, grabs the curb, goes around. That is about as straightforward as it can get, and we do have pit stops lighting up the timing and scoring board. Now we've got a few drivers coming in, it looks like. Cody Eldred, one of them, in the 32 car. He comes in. There you see Brad Delph as well. They're not alone. There's Clemens in the 44 car leading a few down. See Patty in the pit lane. He's been there for a while. Uh, Patinko is in, Gunther, Gladjelic, and Cody Neal comes back through. So your same drivers you'd probably expect uh, end up coming in here. But you know what? You know who I didn't expect that time is this guy, Vincent Loria. He pits from the lead. Basically what I was saying, Andrew. Pit now, top off on fuel, and then save, save, save the rest of the way because these guys will pit, and you will be able to take advantage of gaining that track position and be able to hold on to it the rest of the race. This actually is now perfect. Perfect. 90 to 105 laps, depending on fuel saving. And technically, we can bump that up to 125 now. Um, but I think, I think Justin said he even had a couple gallons left. I mean, uh, pretty insane how much fuel these guys can save under these cautions. But Gloria, the pits right at the edge of that traditional fuel window. So if we went green from here, then Michael would have to pit. Gloria can go to the end. And of course, there's others in this party because you also have to consider 
Uh, Harper and Campbell have pitted since the stage. So Harper, Campbell, and Jennings likely with these couple of yellows. that They are close, if not already to the good. Well, under another caution, Zach, let's take a look at the season schedule. We talked about going to Texas next. As this is still a wild sight to see, the, the fog rolling in. Uh, thank you, iRacing Dynamic Weather being changed recently, adding rain. So cool. But uh, season schedule, Texas next up, then Talladega, Dover, Kansas. And I'll have to check my notes, but there is another race here that we will not be able to make. I want to say it's Darlington, right, on Mother's Day. Um, unfortunately, we won't be there, but we should be there for uh, for Charlotte on Memorial Day Charlotte. weekend. Love, love Charlotte. What a great facility. Great track. It is a top-notch facility. I know uh, there was maybe some Twitter beef earlier this week, if you saw it, but uh, SMI does a fantastic job managing all of their racetracks, and Charlotte is certainly the, the prize, the crown jewel in some ways. They have six or seven or eight different configurations they can have racing on all at once uh, if you count the legends oval and a couple of the road courses and such but here we go back into the restart zone inside of 90 to go in fact let's call it 86 green flag back in the air for michael On the back stretch, Michael still leading. Finnegan second. It's the Purcells, third and fourth. Gunther out of line. Everybody saddling back in, trying to go green. They just need to click these laps off, Andrew, as much as they possibly can. Vincent Loria there getting it to Joshua Clemens. I don't know what happened to Loria on the start, but he's behind Eldred and Clemens, who both pitted under that yellow, and Kevin Gunther. So. There are three cars on his exact strategy. He's behind. There's one of them. Eldred gets loose. Clemens gets him. They keep going. Bissonette down to the inside. Big shake up here. Four wide at Martinsville. That's not going to work. They're almost wrecking. There goes Patinko. Caution. Spinning. Yellow flag. They nearly had the craziest moment of the race and the craziest save. Unfortunately, Patinko. Ends up being the one sent around. But that all started in turn three, the previous lap. So uh, watch this back here with Loria. Eric Smith on the outside. And then the 44 here of Clemens into turn three. He's going to pull right up on Eldred, who grabs the curb, gets loose, slams in the back of him. Then here comes Bissonette on the inside in the 06 car. As we go down to turn one, they're three wide, then four wide right behind him with the 72. And then Patinko comes in and unfortunately ends up being the one tipped around by Tanner Dio and Robert Bluen. Oh, man. Well, that's another drop in the bucket, proverbial bucket, for guys that are trying to save fuel. Absolutely. And this helps out Justin Michael, Nathan Finnegan, Sean Purcell, both of Purcells, really. I think... If I'm not mistaken, the first one on tires is Loria in 12th. Oh, Kevin Gunther. Oh. Kevin Gunther in the 81. Yeah, that was the big point there. Gunther, Clemens, both ahead, and Eldrin was the other one. Eldrin ends up going for that slide. Uh, but Gunther and Clemens both ahead of Loria with the same tires. Delf is there as well on those same tires. Uh, then Blue and Patinko and some others back there that have had some issues since, but... Somebody just blew up. I heard that from someone. Was it Patty? He's been sitting in the pit lane the whole time. Oh, I hope not. It was in turns one and two. It could have been. Let's see. Yep. That was a long bit of suspense, but yes, the stream heard the crunch of the engine letting go as he was sitting there and idling in the pit lane. Uh, so car 30 is officially out. If he wasn't out before, he's definitely out now. And we'll have less than 80 to go when we go back green. 
this race starting to go on for a little bit now. It's it's going to start wearing on these guys. We're coming up on two hours live. Of course, we qualified at, what, eight? So we're probably about an hour and 20 minutes in, and we still have 80 laps to go. Now, 80 can click off quickly here at Martinsville. But if these drivers don't start self-policing, you could still take a while. And I really do mean self-policing, because these guys, they all have the talent to do it. They all have the talent to get these laps in green. It's really just been little, little things. Now, I will say the car is working against them. It's been very apparent that it's difficult to hang on to the car if you get out of line, have to put extra wheel on the car. But, but it all can go together if they just kind of calm down here 80 laps to go let's click them off and get through this race into the geico restart zone we go green flag back in the air at martinsville purcell gets into the six of finnegan are they going to save it out of the corner then again hard in the outside wall it's going to be very oh. detrimental with Finnegan. He was up there running great times, and now he is going to be falling way, way back down the running order. I'll be surprised if he doesn't have suspension damage. Mike Jennings now slow as well. Charlie Widener, a big catch in the middle of all of that. Loria is going to hit the 44 of Clemens ever so slightly, and they're going to spin ahead. Oh, big crash. Big. Gunther, Campbell, Harper, Dio, this and that. They're oh, still no. crashing, guys. Well, a lot of these guys weren't out. Some now are. Lemons, I think, even got a piece of it. Let's see, the 44 is actually behind the start of it, but he's going to get tipped in all of this. Oh, no, and he gets Loria. Big time. He was one of the, like I said, Malik Ray earlier, uh, earlier in the week, had to turn the wheel right. Clemens, same thing there. The car just completely came out from underneath him. Now, that caution, however, started a little bit further ahead. I think it was Gunther and one other car. Campbell, Pocket, Harper. It's well, like Harper. No, Harper got tipped by uh, Lockett, and it's just chaos from there. Finnegan well. didn't get involved. I would tell Finnegan that because he just said it was initially on him. He is claiming the caution. What? Yes, sir. Finnegan's 10 cars back of him. He might have been referencing. I think he was talking to Purcell. He might have been. When he was. When he initially went into the wall. Um. I definitely, it's its a little bit more difficult for me at the moment. I'm, I am having some technical issues with my visual at the moment, but I i thought it was initially from Cochran. Well, here's a, here's a look back at it. Here's Finnegan. He does come down a bit. I think that's what he's talking about. He realized he was higher up on entry, got down to the 04. The 04 was a little ways off the bottom. So contact there puts the six car behind all of this. And then the 12 of Harper is going to get tipped by the 93 of Lockett. Here's a look at it from above, and this might be one of the best looks we get. Yeah, that look is probably looking very good for you viewers on stream, but when I say technical issues, I mean technical issues. I am not getting any, uh, any streams to comment on at the moment. Actually, wait, there we go. Now I got it back. Now I can see what's going on. I can see these replays taking place. And, well waiting to see if anyone is actually claiming the caution. I mean, that would definitely be Lockett. Not hearing anyone claiming it, though. That is the thing going on at the moment. And they can leave that. They can defer that to race admins after the fact. And there we go. Lockett's going to go to the rear. And Harper is completely out of the race. He has just left the yep. session. He is... Gunther isn't going to be far behind, I don't think. Uh, yeah, his engine's smoking in the pit lane. Uh, Bissonette is out. Uh, there is a very short list now of guys who are not out of this race. Um, even the 67 of Loria got a big a big bunch of damage. There he is. He, he just pitted. He just left the pit lane. Cody Neal with him. So 
three, I, I would say th two of the three stars of the show, even Finnegan actually. So three of the four stars of the show, big damage under that yellow. Well, let's give it a go again. Green flag back in the air. We've got 71 to go. And the Purcells, second and third, are gonna control this race behind the 87, big crash. Paseo and others. That happened all too quick right there as the pace truck rolls on by. And I was just taking a look at you. We have 16 cars on the lead lap. And guess who's at the back of that? Moria. Well, not anymore now. Oh, watch this. Taseo way slow on the restart. Eldred Patinko. Jennings there. Taseo just gets loose. He just loses it on his own. Jennings gets a piece. No and then Loria no. turns the car down. That actually bounces him off the wall into Adam Ball. And... The issues are just compounding for the entire field right now. It's just one after another. And the unfortunate thing is, and this is where it gets difficult in all forms of racing, if you have the stop and go, everybody starts to realize they get into that mentality, Zach, especially at a short track, of time is running out. These cautions are taking opportunities away to move up in the field. So they're going to get more and more antsy, more and more desperate. Ooh. It's just going to keep compounding. Adam Ball escaping what could have been quite nasty incident for him and he's still got a piece of damage yeah he definitely does that left front is that left front towed in looks okay here on the corner but the real indicator will be after and on the straightaway here that looks, looks okay straight. we do have one driver who actually wants to go ahead and talk to us here for a minute uh, ryan patty out of this race for now several laps. Looks like he is 52 laps down, but we can bring in driver number 30. And uh, Ryan, this has been... Absolutely, ma'am. I'd love to oh. sign your baby. Oh. Okay. This has been a, a difficult race uh, for some drivers. For others, clean and green out front in terms of, I mean, the 87 leading. You obviously on the other end of that, Ryan. What happened for you? Oh, yeah. I mean, we uh, we had a rough go there. I uh, thought we had a pretty good car to run top top three podium, maybe even have a shot at the win. But uh, yeah, I got caught up in a wreck that, uh, you know, it's just a typical Martinsville deal. Someone gets loose, turns down, takes you out. and uh, We got enough damage repaired to keep the car fast, even though we didn't have a front bumper on it. But uh, unfortunately, uh, racing there, uh, I think it was just a racing deal with the uh, with the six car came down. And he turned us into the wall and, you know, it eventually caused some suspension damage. So I thought it was probably just best to park it for the night. And the way I look at these kinds of races, they're difficult to navigate. They're still oh so compelling. We have strategy options all over the racetrack right now, but difficult to navigate, I think, is the way to put it. Would, would you agree there? Yeah, I mean, because you're, you're, you're running a lot of unpredictable things, you know? Like, there's, there's a tons, of, tons of drivers out here that don't have a lot of experience on short tracks with different breaking points, different skill levels when it comes to breaking and turning. And then you've got some guys up front that are super aggressive have practiced all week they've fine-tuned their brake biases and their steering ratios so they know exactly how to wheel the car you know on entry you get it to rotate and get a good run off so um you know when you mix those two things together and you get guys mid-pack that are trying to make their way through there's obviously going to be a, a few discrepancies well ryan i think we'll be talking to you a few more times here we're going to get back green justin michael out front going to talk to you yeah absolutely right calling him a couple more times here before this race is over Justin Michael, restart zone, green flag, fires off quickly, and he gets away from the this pack of hungry, hungry drivers. And he hit on something there, Zach, as we go back green. You've got a bunch of different drivers from all walks of sim racing, different levels of experience. I think that is showing a little bit, because these guys are all close quarters, and... Oh, did I just see another car spinning? Yeah. Yes, you did. Elder at 32. Yeah, we saw him getting turned around right there, and that saves these drivers that are heading into pit road right now. Jennings, Neil, they're all going down. I think they all, apparently, they all had black flags to serve for some reason. Here's Eldred. This is turn two. What's going to happen in turn four? You see Finnegan right behind, and they stack up ahead of him. He tries to move down, and Patinko just comes through like a uh, Miley Cyrus impersonation and tags the left rear. That's very 2013 of you. Uh, I was forced to watch uh, the Miley Cyrus, not Miley, a Hannah Montana movie. You know, 
Uh, hey, recently. that's not a bad movie. We all grew uh, up on Disney. I'm not going to say it was bad, but I got forced to watch it recently. It wasn't exactly by choice, and now Patenko here letting the field go by. And for I don't know what the reason is for particularly. I, I think it might be passing under yellow. I'm not quite sure. But the drivers you saw going into pit road as the caution was coming out, Neil, uh, Anthony, the 15, Jennings, Eric Smith in the 79, they all have black flags. Not sure why. And with the caution coming out, they wouldn't have been able to serve it, so they're going to have to deal with that. If they were in pit road before the caution came out, iRacing actually, for some reason, is now allowing drivers to serve their penalties if they're on pit road when the caution came out. It happened to me during a road to pro race in Atlanta. I had a black flag to serve. I got to pit road. I was not even to my pit box, the caution came out, I was still allowed to serve my penalty. So it, they might still be able to do it. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. Hmm. Well, as the field goes by, this race has definitely taken some turns. I mean, the, the top three have been the same, I think, for about the last 30 laps. Ever since the 67 pitted, well, first of all, his day has been pretty well ruined by that. And of course, he was caught up in that big turn two crash. The car looks okay now. I mean, there, there's no telling exactly what is wrong with it, though. Steering looks okay. He might be back in this race, but you know what? Zach, he's back there again in 16th, 17th spot. He's been so fast in every single race, but if we look back at the points, he's barely 12th. He's tied for 11th, technically, with Cody Eldrin. But when you look at the very different seasons they've had as far as speed, the 32 and the 67, it's absolutely mind-boggling that Loria is that far down the order. He has had such great speed, but can't get these races put together. And I would even say Cody Neal is in that same category. It's kind of a miracle that he was able to, to get through without bad luck at Richmond last week. It's been so, so difficult for those two drivers in particular. And what do you know? They're trying to continue. On the bright side... For Loria, at least. Stage points? Maybe? Yeah, he did get the stage one win. I think he might have had a few at the end of stage two. It, it was tough. You only get five positions to get stage point. But hey, regardless, we are inside of 60 to go. 59 this time by. 17 and on the lead lap. From the fan cam, we're back green. Up out of the corner, double file for a lot of the field, a few drivers single file, but these two side by side, Sean and Kyle Purcell. And there's the stack up, Mike Jennings in the back. And they will keep it green. Cody Neal lapping back through the pit lane. I think he's serving that penalty now. Oh no, caution on the speedway. Finnegan. Finnegan and Delph. claiming the caution for this one so let's see how it all works out he is on the inside there that would that would track let's see this down here in turns one and two watch the 73 on the inside he's going to get deep into Big the 72 seven. and finally cyrus again making an appearance so finnegan doing an outstanding job not getting any damage in that caution absolutely great job checking up you know what i'm going to say though in in defense of both anthony campbell on this caution and Evan Patinko on the previous yellow. This car, as soon as you hit the brakes, you're liable to lock up. I, I'm not Look sure. Back there, as before yeah. they even wrecked, there was big, big stack ups. But in defense of those two drivers, as soon as you put brake into it, the car, the left front just completely locks up. And it's difficult. It's like prototype braking. If you've ever driven, uh, especially an LMP1 car here on iRacing, uh, you, you might know what I'm talking about, even some of the GTPs. Um, Absolutely. If you, for a second, even lock up that that inside tire going into a corner... Um, Rear end steps out, steps right around on you. Not even that, it, it just... You're trying to manage then that lockup, and you've got lights in those GT, and, and, well, prototype cars, uh, but if you lock up for a second, it's likely locked up all the way in because it's still applying that pressure. So if it's already locked up then, it's skidding across the pavement, it's reducing, well, 
they were reducing friction. That sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it's already skidding across the asphalt and you have to let off of the brake to get it to unlock. And that's difficult as a driver, well, for anybody, because if you're having to let off the brake into the corner, you're then going to go deeper into the corner. So as soon as you lock up, man, it is so, so tough until you release brake pressure. And even then, the brake might stay locked. It is so, so dang tough. And I, I will come to defense of those two guys who I just called Miley Cyrus. When you lock up the left front, you're along for the ride. And it's Pretty easy much. to do nowhere to go really and it's it's still interesting because iRacing does not have part and mechanical failures just yet the thing the only thing mechanical that can fail on you right now is the motor and for those who might have watched the cookout 400 earlier today at martinsville speedway for the nascar cup series we saw who was it john hunter nemechek blew a right front brake rotor it, it's very easy to do at a track like this where you're constantly on the brakes and heating those brake rotors up and you know they just get too hot and they'll snap snap is a light way to put it yeah i mean when a brake rotor <laughs> explodes it is <laughs> that's scary it, it's it's almost like Even pg uh, yeah it, it's almost like um if you've been on that. the freeway and yeah, a semi if a semi blows a tire there's so much pressure in those 18 wheeler tires those highway tires it's it's like an explosion Well, thankfully, these drivers don't have that to deal with in the sim today as we see everyone getting double file, pace truck pulling off. Andrew, we've still got quite a few laps left to go in this just over 50 laps. 52 at the drop of the green here once again. Onto the front stretch, waiting on it, waiting on it. Green flag back in the air for Justin Michael on the two Purcells. Charlie Widener, they're in fourth. He's back into the top five. Lockett, Loria, they fight for fifth as they work down to the turn three. Yeah, side by side, going through the corner. Purcell all the way up. Loria finally starting to make a comeback after he was towards the tail end of the lead lap. And he is not wasting any time trying to get back to the front, gain back what he has lost on the back bumper of Widener. Still not clear of Purcell just yet, but I think he'll get him right here going into three. And now he can set his focus. Oh. But Widener gets him right up the racetrack, didn't nudge him that hard, gave him a little scare, and now he is taking advantage of it and up to third as Justin Michael goes purple. Yeah, Michael's got to get it going. I think he's going to be good on fuel at this point, but he's got to get it going. That 67 making quick work of the field. Despite the cautions that he was involved in, he's now through, and he pitted most recently 12 laps ago, and it looks like it was for full service. I would have to bet that he's got new tires on that car. If he can get to Justin Michael, it might be game over for the uh, 87. But there's still a lot of time to go and two seconds that he'd have to make up. There's a lot yet to happen in this race. Further back, you see that rest of the top five battle. In the top ten, these guys all single file back here. Yeah, now we're starting to see a little bit more of a tamer racetrack than we were expecting, especially uh, for in now. these last 50 laps. For now. Ooh, ball got a really bad run, and here goes Joshua Clemens down to the bottom. Luckily, we were on board with him at the time, as we are now seeing a pass. At least I'm going to say a pass, because here he goes. Caution on the speedway. Never mind. And, oh, I'm not sure where this is going to be. It not might really be it. for Dio. Maybe Jennings? Well, Jenny, no, Jennings still up there. He's right behind the, the cars we were just looking at. It was somebody clearly who had a quick spin and got back going. Um, here's from the fisheye camera on the top of the roof, and it was Corley in the 88. Again? I he, has had, I just... he has had such a painful race, and it's Anthony Campbell on the inside. Oh, Contact. That's... Two familiar drivers making headlines for all the wrong reasons. I think a couple of them, yes, have been Corley's small mistakes that unfortunately it, it compounds into caution, right? It's, it's the small things and we've talked about it. Caution after caution, it feels like. These cars are hard to handle. They don't drive like you would expect a stock car to do so here at Martinsville. So if you don't have much experience with it, um, you're gonna have a rough day. But this time, 
You see the lockup. He came down the racetrack ever so slightly. Campbell was there. That's racing, honestly, between the two. And we could have kept the race green. That's that's I racing stepping in. That didn't definitely. Need yeah, that definitely could have been kept green right there. And that's why some leagues nowadays just decide to use admin cautions instead of relying on the sim. But he had a ball thing in off pit road right now. Inko right there behind him coming off pit road as well in the 96. It is as Daytona race winner Milfelt comes into the pit lane. You can see why as he's got no front bumper. Pulling the Patty strategy. Hey, he made it work. It just uh, didn't completely play out in his favor as we've got 44 laps to go at the moment. Neil back on pit road. That, that tire's actually been getting a little bit better, Andrew. I think he might actually get some of that damage fixed to a point where he can be competitive again. Repair after repair, yeah. Uh, to, to cover some of the drivers who are deeper in this field now, they've had some issues, or just trying to get back through. Here's Rakowski. He is, let's see, 30, not 30, 31st. He's 26th, 41 laps down. At the back of the field, we'll have Hanover Fist in 32nd, Heath Smith 31st, James and Havlin in 30th, Stephen Tuck in 29th, Thomas Taylor 28th, Ryan Patty 27th, then you get to Rakowski. All of those drivers behind him out of the race. Justin Bissonnette in 25th is out and will be passed here by the 33 in a lap of two. Harper is out, he's 32 down. Galadulich is back on the racetrack, just took more repairs. Here he comes again. Uh, he is 23rd, 16 down. Kevin Gunther works down the pit lane. He is 22nd, 14 down. Eric Smith has recently called it a night. He is 21st, 10 down. And then you get to Tanner Dio in this 20 car, who, from the beginning of this race, has just been trying to fight back. And I think for about 197 laps, has been six laps down, it feels like. Um, Anthony DeSeo ahead of him, 19th spot, four laps down. And then you get to Cody Neal, the first car one lap down. Currently, he's two laps down in 18th spot. And this... Will take us to another restart. One more chance and look at Vincent Loria now on the outside of Justin Michael. The tables have turned. We're back green at Martinsville. Loria just needs to clear that 0-1. He will. Widener Purcell and Purcell now fight. Yeah, Purcell gonna try to fall in line here. The other Purcell moving through. So you've got a Purcell. 3-4 as Finnegan starts to work his way back to the front trying to gain back all of this time to get caught in caution after caution after caution with 40 laps to go I think it's crunch time for him I think he's ready to get that car up to the front and show these guys why he can't compete he's been in just about every single position so far first to 29th at some point through the day he's back into the top five working here on Sean Purcell Kyle Purcell, who started so much better, had a great qualifying effort, is up here in third again. Sean's about to get passed up, it looks like, by that six car. And remember... Not unless Finnegan can get the run here, he's going to try to stay with him. Remember, Finnegan won last week at Richmond. So another short track, and the six car went to victory lane. Phoenix and Richmond, two oddly similar race tracks, and both would be considered, I think, short tracks. And the six car went to victory lane in each of them. So this is pretty well in his wheelhouse. And now he's cleared Sean Purcell looking on Kyle as Loria has his sight set on that 87. They were fighting earlier on in the race and Loria is closing. Vincent has gained about, I want to say about two tenths in the last couple of laps. And he is still working that gap down ever so slightly, lap after lap after lap, just logging them. And like I said earlier on, that middle line is still pretty peppy and you can carry a lot of momentum there. You can see just how much he closes on Justin Michael throughout the course of this run. And with the lights on here now, Andrew, the track has cooled down quite a considerable amount and the grip level should be up. The track temp weirdly has stayed, I think, right at 72 for the last hour or so, even though the air temp is dropping. Uh, because there's cars going around, it might not cool all that much overall, but you're right, certain sections of the racetrack are going to keep cooling throughout the night. Uh, what's interesting here, is Loria was actually only about four tenths back in the first couple of laps since the restart. He's now fallen back and is starting to claw back up. He's got better tires by some 50 laps. So 
you would think, at least that was the last time he pitted, and it says 16 seconds. I think he took tires, he might not have. So it might be a, a smaller advantage than we thought, but he's got a tire advantage regardless over that 87 car by how much we just don't know. And they have driven away from third place Nathan Finnegan, fourth place Kyle Purcell, fifth Sean caution. Purcell, and caution again, Kyle Corley with the quick yeah, trip to the pit lane. Now he's out of the car, he's in the pit lane. I think he has finally decided that he is done for the night. As Kyle Corley has exited the race car, exited the racetrack, and he will not be returning for the rest of the night, seeing what happened here. And on a rough day. I think he just got loose by himself. Yeah, up the racetrack and catches it around. Damage on the right rear, and I, yeah, I think he decided after that. It's the day has been very, very, very rough. And watch on board here, part. and and put yourself in his shoes. He's got a little bit of damage, admittedly. Intuitively, the car is just kind of in it too. Well, the car just kind of moves around almost at will. He's a little bit low here down the back stretch, giving room to the wall. But here, well, he did have a lot of wheel in it when he gassed up. Tough day for him. But you know who we were? How we were just talking about Michael and Lori and everybody up here with track position. It resets them once again, and all of those deltas come back down. Now, if they were to pit, they would go somewhere towards the rear of now 16 lead lap cars. Do you take the tires here in the last 30 laps and give up the track position no. and go to the back end of 16th? I, no. I, don't, I don't think I would. I, I think I would take the old tires at this point in time. Do not pit unless the field is going to come with you. Because you, at this stage in the race, we're on lap 211 here, Andrew. We've only got about 20, 29 laps to go, 30 laps, actually. There is no reason that you should give up the track position while you have it now. Sure, you'll get in front of the lap cars, but you'll be thrusted right back into the race with all of those midfield drivers, and you're going to have to struggle, put some wear and tear on those tires, and then by the time another caution comes out later in the race, everyone else will pit, you'll gain the track position, and now all those who stayed out will pit. They'll be right there next to you. You won't get, really have gained that much at all. Well, all bets are off. This becomes quintessential Martinsville at this point. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, we've got three cars up front with very different strategies. Really, I'd say five, six, seven, eight even. Uh, Delph in 8th, he pitted 26 laps ago. Gloria pitted 33 ago. And then you've got a bunch of guys that have been out there for 100 or 87 laps, and we thought the Purcells would have to pit. Do they maybe have the fuel to go? I mean, they're at lap 100 now. I think they still have to come in. I win. That's a very good question, and fortunately, I don't have an answer for you as the field doubles up, and I... I'm just very concerned at how the rest of this race may go for some of these drivers that may or may not be able to make it. Cody Neal still two laps down as well, by the way. He did not get the free pass for some reason, and pace truck pulls off, and well, we're about to turn him loose one more time. Uh, inside of 30 to go. Just over 25. All 27 here. Michael, back in the restart zone, fires off and away. Finnegan to the inside of Loria. He's going to show the nose. He's got position into turn one. Loria's got to fire off a of turn two. He's got it, and will get back clear to second place. And so nearly really, gets Michael in three. That was an odd move out of Michael on the, on the restart. It's Loria got loose coming out of turn number four. I, I did not expect Michael to just shoot up to the racetrack oh. of the wall. It's, now we got to fight the second bit again underneath. Lori is struggling right now. Something is going on inside that race car. I am not sure what it is, but he has got to get it figured out. Contact. Oh, oh big, big crash. Caution is out. The six car has got damage all over. Loria putting the wall. Does he have, is the toe messed up on that car? No, he is still well and clear, but my goodness. Martinsville, lights are on, sun is down. 
temps are low. Brake rotors are glowing. What more could you ask for? A little bit of drama maybe here in the last 25 laps. Take a look back and see what happened with cars 6 and 67. This is out of turn 4. Those are just two guys that met in the middle. I mean... Gloria, I think, is an extra foot or so off the wall here, Zach. Then again, is tracking out. That's a tough spot to be in for both of those drivers. Watch here. Well, Slow-mo. Gloria came down a little bit. There's contact. And there is some tensions going on. I would imagine. This I... is leading up to it. I believe I it's going to happen know... this time in three and four. I don't know the decision, really. To um, I really don't know what the decision is for Finnegan or Gloria not to go to the rear. I think they're just going to deem it a racing incident. But I can certainly tell you, from my standpoint at the moment, that there is some heavy shade going on right now and Finnegan has stated over the radio and I quote whether I choose to or not to send him is for me to know and everybody else to find out he'll be behind him on he, this restart he will and this is going to turn into something I feel like we all see coming as Cody Neal has taken one more lap back he is now officially one lap down take one more look at it see Finnegan just come up off the line and I hope nothing comes out of this. I think both drivers need to look back at it. I think both drivers would have changed what they were doing to avoid that. Of course, at the moment, at least, neither driver is going to see it that way, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's Martinsville's short track racing. Unless they get out of the car, right. Unless they come in and pit and get out of the car. In, or if they're watching the, the broadcast, which in some drivers do. Um, some drivers like to have that, you know as a sub so that way they can see if they need to claim something or not. I mean, I know I like watching the broadcast when I'm inside the race car. Obviously, not while I'm driving, but hey, who wouldn't want to watch Pit Stop TV and see all the cool action that we've got going on with 20 laps to go next time we cross the line. Should be one to green. And Andrew, who, who are you betting on at this point now? Who do you think is going to come away with this win? Barney the flag. Hey, I wouldn't put it past him. He's thrown that yellow flag enough times. That he's, he's thrown it as many times as we probably turned last tonight. Well, it's interesting to me. Barney the Flagman here at Martinsville is still in the old NASCAR official uniform. You don't see that often. I actually didn't know that was the old official's uniform. Huh. Yeah, you, you usually get the uh, the new iRacing one. But field going to work down the back stretch. Let's see how this restart goes. I'm I'm nervous. Are you nervous? Because I'm nervous. Expectations are all over here. Michael inside. Gloria outside. Then Kyle Purcell. Nathan Finnegan. Sean Purcell. Brad Delph, your top six. Restart zone again. 19 to go. Green flag back in the air. We're racing again to Martinsville. Gloria gets down to the bottom in front of Kevin Purcell. So it looks like... What we were expecting has not come to fruition. Which Gloria I'm right oh. on Justin Michael. He's roughing him up. Chase, Chase Elliott, William Byron earlier today in the cookout 400 as Gloria is determined to get back to the front. He's been involved in way too many incidents tonight. He is had it up to here. I think he's good on corner entry. He's a little less quick on corner exit. Maybe an effect of all the damage he's ended up, ended up taking throughout this race. You can see there's still, of course, from that last caution, Yellow, he's got some damage. And Evan Is Patinko. that Ryan Patty? As more cars spin again in the wall again. Oh, and with Ryan Patty. Patty decided he was going to be able to get that car back on the racetrack, fully clean, fully repaired, and well, I, I don't know as. So he goes around, I think at the same time as Patinko. Here's Patinko yeah, off of turn Patinko's four. Around. There's Patty off of turn two. Simultaneous spins. And how does Finnegan get in this? Oh, no. So where's Finnegan? So he's he's racing here with, with Kyle Purcell. 
blinks out just a little bit. I right wonder there. if this is an effect of him having the blinks. So comes back here, he's up the racetrack. I oh think he was God. just following the zero one and didn't see that Patty was there. He's an onboard look. Yeah, oh. I mean, he just he reacted very very late. Uh, that's that's news to me to think that he just didn't see that Patty was there. And he's staying on the racetrack. He is not going to pit road. I... And, and the yellow's already out there. He might be if he has other software running. Might be looking at crew chief or, or whatever program he might have in the background. He might be looking off the screen. Patty just out here trying to log some laps, gain as many spots as he can. He's not going to gain too much. And with, he gets uh, blinking all over. Yeah, the next car above Patty is 30 laps ahead of him. We don't even have that many laps left in the race. As Cody Neal should theoretically get the free pass here to take it back around. And he's pitting uh, here. He might have had an incident under that yellow. That's no longer be eligible. That's very questionable from like uh, for Cody Neal. Is he really needed that? Closer and closer. By one. There was definitely aggression in that reason. Gloria, I don't know if he is of the mindset here that he's got to use the bumper to go by. Are you sure? Well, you've got Justin Michael. He's led, it feels like the whole race aside from stage one. Just about 136 laps tonight. That's definitely most laps led out of the, all these drivers. You've got Justin Michael, Vincent Loria, both the Purcells right behind them, Brad Delf, Charlie Widener, Zach Lockett, Mike Jennings, Michael Melfelt Jr., who, by the way, still has no nose, and Cody Elrod, your top 10. Looks like. Not the top 10 we expected either. Yeah. Uh, it looks like four cars pitted this time around. Cody Neal, one of them. Evan Patinko, another. Along with Gladulus in the 14, Patty in the 30. And they took um, tires, too. Oh, yeah, at this point. You've got them. Take them. Um, up front, the most recently anybody up front has pitted was actually Milfell, who's going to restart in ninth. He pitted 32 laps ago. The next soonest was Brad Dell, 43 laps ago, then Vincent Loria, 50 ago. The Purcells have been on the racetrack for 117 laps. They've not hit it since sometime in stage number two. Here we go. 11 laps remaining. How is this going to work out? Let's find out. Restart zone, green flag again. Michael fires, Loria follows. We've got ourselves a race. He is right on that back bumper, Andrew, trying to make something work. Lose a little bit of ground, but they have walked away as somebody just had a motor expire again. Oh, I think it was Adam Ball. What a bit as Lori is with the racetrack. Here comes the Purcells. Kyle what? fires up underneath. Sean going to follow. Caution on the speedway. That was 10 laps to go, and Lori is going to get trapped behind the 01. But Tinko turned around. But that's going to put Lori on the bottom now. He's going to have that inside line to take one good shot at Justin Michael. Lewin comes down the racetrack. Ooh. and goes there. It just sends him for a spin. That's just two guys making contact on the street. Now, what we really need to see here is what in the world happened to the 67 as we saw Adam Ball pit. That's a little bit late, even. Did he lock up? I mean, what happens here to the 67? He gets Michael that time in one and two. Just ever so slightly. That's where he gets the fence. Down here in three, he uh, gets free. So he is even not immune. And I, I feel like with as touchy as this car already is, Zach, if you take the slightest bit of suspension damage, you're going to fight it all night long. Absolutely. Even just a little bit of suspension damage can really, really affect the car. And it's, it's not something you like, especially when dealing with a lot going on at Martinsville. There's, there's so much that happens here that you really need to make sure you're staying in it the whole time. And I, I don't know what is going to happen here. I think Mikey Neal, or excuse me, Cody Neal, 
a friend who has the same last name, so that's why it keeps popping into my head. And looks like he's back on the lead lap, finally. He is, finally. Our pole sitter. I, so I actually forgot that he was the pole sitter. Yeah. I, I do want to set something straight. I, I, I try to stay cognizant, right, of how much time we spend on each driver and how much we talk about each driver. And I, I know in recent weeks, the 67, the 4, or really all season, they've been relatively polarizing. They, they each have their aggress aggressive moments. Um, they each certainly have, I, I think, reasons that they are polarizing at this point. And it feels like, admittedly, we talk about them a lot because they have been so fast consistently. And, and it's been kind of in and out otherwise. I mean, Brian Smith is the only other driver I feel like that's had that speed every single week. Finnegan is close, really, really close. So we talk about him a lot as well. But the 67 and the 4 have been so quick, so reliably, that they, I, I mean, they, they just, I, I can't think of two larger stories so far in the season, aside from the two drivers who have multiple wins, uh, Brian Smith and Nathan Finnegan. Smith's not here today. Finnegan has been through the ringer. He's worth talking about. He's 12th. Uh, we'll see if he can get anything on these restarts. But... The 4 and the 67, I feel like we're going to be talking about them a lot the rest of the season because they have just, they've been through it all and it's only week 7. Well, when it rains, it pours. What was the, what was that, the rest of that expression that good old David Levine said, when it rains, it pours, and when it pours, something the about rain, the pour. When it rains, it pours, and the poor pour drink. Ah... Yeah, that's, uh, that's my, well, not mine. From a song. What song? I can't think of the song now. Uh, regardless. Out the window. We've got four laps to go, Andrew. Yeah. Time to turn it up a notch. Grab that popcorn. Make sure you're on the edge of your seat, because here we go. Four laps to go at Martinsville. Wouldn't have it any other way. We've got two miles left of racing. Green flag in the air. Inside line goes. Outside line is sleeping. Loria God, sends it back. into the 87. He's got second spot. He did not get to him very well, and that shot did not do much. Oh, my Sending gosh. Again. What a... He oh, got him. Here we go. The 87 can't get him back. Everybody's sliding all over. What is going to happen to Martinsville? Loria to the front. That was aggressive. He's still sliding, and here they come. He's They're right back to him. They're going to hit him. Purcell now up to second, going for the lead. Loria up the racetrack. Justin Michael says, you know what? If that's how we're going to do it, I can do the exact same thing. And I can assure you, he's going to go. get to him. And up the racetrack goes Purcell. There goes, Mi Michael there goes Michael. Goes Caution, maybe. Yes, caution's out. Purcell, I think, has the race oh, lead. Cody Neil Neal. just got hooked. It's chaos at Martinsville. Shades of uh, what year was it? With And there goes Michael behind the garages. Yeah, he's looking for, I think, the 67 car. Oh, you best believe that's who he's looking for. He's coming back around. And I have very much, here. I have very much personally come to the defense of the 67 a lot <laughs> because of what we just talked about, of all of the bad luck. Um, I've never seen a driver take so many shots. I don't know what happened between the 67 and 87. I don't know if it's personal or not. I've never, ever, ever seen something like that in my life. Sim racing, virtual, uh, virtual or real. I've been to a lot of short track races. I've called some short track races in the real world. I, I've never, ever seen something like that. Purcell did it all clean. He got to the inside of the 67 there. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch on this restart. What in the world happens, though, between this 87 and everything else? This is turns one and two. Michael went in. He tried to give the 0-1 a yep, shot. Got he the curb. ended up upsetting the car. And Delph. It's, Delph gets him, and then this is where it all goes wrong. He gasses oh, up into the four. No. And you have to feel for Cody Neal. Just got the damage Again. fixed. Just got back on the lead lap. And now he's probably going to have that right front towed out again. Take a look on board here, or at least from a camera shot. Looks straight to me from what we saw just now. This is coming up to the crash. 
Ooh, look at the spoiler cam. No, you can go back to that if you want to. Well, th Andrew. this this shows what's happening here, and he just gets absolutely clobbered. I think the netcode just saved him right there. Well, let's see the okay. right front when he whips it around. Doesn't look too bad. Look, if we go to live clean. picture, pretty straight. I'm pretty impressed. Straight. And if the 67 wasn't already polarizing enough, um, the bed has been made. I've been well, very, again, very defensive because I, I've, I've liked the aggression. I feel like to this point it's been, I haven't seen much that's been dirty. I know a lot of drivers, just to be candid about it, have been of a different feeling. Um, have felt like he's been a little bit too rough. I'll agree today. He, that, again, I've just, I've never, ever aggressive. seen that. That was Bowman Gray stuff. And there's a place for that, I think, in short track racing. It's exciting. For us, it's it's great. These drivers are not going to like that. Well, now the field's really been shaken up. Vincent Loria, still your leader. Kyle Purcell and Brad Delph are second and third. Charlie Widener, fourth. Michael Melfeld Jr., again, no front bumper, pulling the Ryan Patty strat. He's up to fifth. And then you've got Anthony Campbell, Nathan Finnegan, Mike Jennings, Sean Purcell. I am not sure what happened to Sean Purcell in all of that. He went backwards very quickly. Cody I Eldred. He, I think he went up the track in three and four before the crash happened. Very possible. Cody Neal has gained a spot. Justin Michael has relegated himself to the tail end of the lead lap. Green white checkered attempt number one, Andrew. How do we what's see it playing happen. out? Do we take the white? Do we take the checkered? Do we see another yellow? What's going to happen here? Great call out. We are in icon overtime. Down the front stretch, green flag back in the air, an early jump there from the 67. But we are green again at Martinsville, two laps to go. If they complete this lap, the race is official. If we get a caution, we run it back. Purcell not able to get up to the 67. They're fighting all throughout the field. Widener up top is taken third. There's a spin. Oh, sliding. There goes the 95. The caution. The caution comes out. They're gonna run it back. Everybody's still piling in. And if wow. you are Vincent Loria, you have to say, you guys couldn't have made it another football field. Just another football field. See, Ryan Patty's still on the racetrack now. He's just logging laps now, hoping to gain another spot as the laps continue to go on. What an Only unbelievable about. set of circumstances. Here's Widener, lo loose on his own. Gets Lockett, gets Jennings, Campbell, Purcell, Cody Neal comes in. Neal didn't get too Justin much out of Justin Michael that. fires through there. By the way, Justin Michael now is in position number 14. This is just unbelievable. Um, Kyle Purcell, by the way. I, the rest of this top three, because Vincent's been quick, but Kyle Purcell and Brad Delph both. Unbelievable to have them both here in the top three. A chance to win this race. Delph has been listed as a part-timer. Although, well, until today, he's no longer listed part-time. He might be running full-time now. Uh, Kyle Purcell wow. has had such a tough season. Here he is second. He almost got by Loria by a caution earlier, I think, to set up that overtime. He could lock himself in the playoff tonight. But I will say, <clears throat> I, after listening to race communication, the league admins are getting a little, a little irritated because Andrew... I don't know if you've been keeping track. I'm sure you have. 28 cautions tonight. We have turned more than half of this race under the yellow flag tonight. A lot of it is the car, I have to say. I, I think a lot of it is the car because we've seen so many drivers just have to fight it and barely get the, the car gets twitchy. They go around for a slide where they just hit the curb, and in years past, if you go back to the Gen 6, the Gen 5, the Gen 4, yes, if you hit the curb, you're in for it. Usually, you just go up the racetrack, sometimes you'd spin, but it's an instant spin, it feels like. You hit the curb, you're going around. And even if you get out of line, and you have to put wheel into it to correct back onto the line, you're going around. Um, if you have to correct on the straightaway, you're going around. A lot of it is the car. At the same time, I made a comment earlier, it's kind of self-policing with the drivers. If, if you give... If you give, because there is give and take. If you give, you can take later. If you give early, you can get these laps and log these stages. You can get it done. It's a temperament, a very much a temperament. And 
nothing at all against any of these drivers. They're all talented. They all can run these races and not have cautions. But there's those outside forces. There's those, oh, I can get the spot. I, I need to get the spot for points. And that's what it's coming down to. Um, we can have good races. We will have good races the rest of the season. This has just been one of those nights. Well, let's see how this night shakes up as we get ready to go green. Vincent Loria, Kyle Purcell, Brad Delph up to third, Michael Melfeld Jr. to fourth, Nathan Finnegan to fifth place, Zach Lockett, Sean Purcell, Anthony Campbell. That's your top eight. That's your first four rows and probably anybody that really has a shot at it. Electric is how I would describe this overtime attempt number two. Vincent Loria into the restart zone. Green flag, he's off and away. It's Kyle Purcell's second. Brad Delph is third, and he's going to get the spot into turn one. Side by side, all of those rows deep. Vincent Loria, this is exactly what he wants to see. Rolling through three. Delph checks up early. Finnegan. There goes Finnegan. No Green caution. Green, they file in. White flag White is out, flag. presented by Whiplash Sim Cams. They're crashing all over. But Vincent Loria just has to come around and complete a quarter mile to finally get a win. I think there will be an asterisk, but there's going to be a win in store for Car 67. He has finally taken a win. It comes at Martinsville off of his front bumper. In a parking lot in turn number one as they roll through on the cooldown lap. Vincent Loria, your winner tonight. Kyle Purcell second. Zach Where's the Lockett 87? third. Where is the 87? We're looking for him. There's Justin Michael. He's coming off of turn two, and he's coming with a full head of steam, Andrew. Coming on to the front stretch now. Yep, he's here we go. He's looking for him. He's looking for him. Yep. He's not happy. Vincent Loria, your winner. Kyle Purcell, Zach Lockett, Anthony Campbell, fourth. Nathan Vinnigan, fifth. Charlie Widener, he was 17th when the, when the green flag came out. He finished seventh. And Somebody else we, doing burnouts here. That was Taseo. Is it maybe, yeah, Cody and Neal. They're, they're treating it as a team win. Cody and Neal ends up one lap down. 15th position. Most race interviews are going to be a fun one. Oh, this is going to be a blast, Andrew. Are you uh, ready? I'm ready. No, I, I would I would not say I am. That's my professional opinion. Here's here's the restart. Al Purcell back here, second place. Brad Delph. What happens with the six of Finnegan? This is down here to turn three. Delph checks up. Finnegan has to try to check up. He goes for a slide. That triggers this chain reaction of nobody wanting to check up. And they're going to crash at a turn four somewhere. There's Michael getting hooked by Eldred in a three wide. Sean Purcell's in it. Cody Neal and more. As that happened, they crashed for, I think, third. And Zach Lockett actually ended up going through to take third place. That's the little Let's reset here. Catch up a little bit. There's going to be some words. There's going to be a few more than just words. Finnegan. Did not expect Delph to check up that hard. That's what caused him to get And then check this out on the front stretch. Delph got sideways, puts it into Milfelt, and Delph finishes 11th, Milfelt 10th, and then Parking Zach lot. Lockett ends up just firing through it all. Anthony Campbell is going to finish 4th, Nathan Finnegan 5th, and Vincent Maria walks away with the race win. And that's, I said it earlier, polarizing. Almost like, I would say... Peanut butter asterisk. and strawberry jelly. See what I did there? Do you see what I did there? Hopefully you do. Um, let's see. Race results after a crazy night in Martinsville, Virginia. It's Loria, race winner. I, you can't take it away from him. At least I don't think you can. Admins might step in. This is going to be a full week of work for them. They're going to take quite a bit of a yeah. look at a lot of these incidents that we saw here tonight, especially those incidents right there on the last lap that took place. And, you know, just you can see it right here on your official's results. Kyle Purcell, six tenths of a second back. Zach Lockett, two seconds further. Anthony Campbell, three. Nathan Finnegan, five. And then the rest, I, and I mean the rest of them, all got caught up in that last lap turn of events. Only a few of them made it back to the line 
before the checkered flag came out. That's why we have so many other cars a lap down right now. Vincent Loria, Kyle Purcell, Zach Lockett, Anthony Campbell, and Ethan Finnegan, your top five. Charlie Widener, Justin Michael, Robert Bolin, uh, Cody Ellerid, and Michael Melfelt Jr., your top ten, Andrew. And We'll it, fire through the rest because, I mean, this we, we got drivers to talk to. I don't want the emotion to go down. Here's 11 through 20th, Delph, Patinko, Purcell, Ball, Neil, your top 15. Clemens also a lap down. Jennings, Dio, Teseo, Gladulich. Fire through the rest here. Gunther, Rakoski. These guys all out of the race, really. Aside from Except Patty, Patty. He, came, yeah, he came back in. Might have been one or two other stragglers um, down through the end of 32 cars. Absolutely an insane, shocking race at times. Vincent John? Loria, you do take the race win. Gotta be in controversial fashion. I said earlier you're a bit of a polarizing figure in the series. You got the stage one win. You've been fast all over, chasing that win, chasing that monkey to get it the heck off of your back. You do so tonight, but with the bumper. A lot of drivers are going to be critical. How do you put it? I mean, it's Martinsville, man. I, if I didn't have, if I didn't battle any adversity that race, like I came back from a minute and a half of damage. I got involved with Nathan there. I was driving a junk race car. Like, I don't know if you could see my steering wheel on the broadcast. You see me get loose like 10 times, but I bent something in there. I was driving around an absolute hunk of junk and I was not just going to sit behind him for, you know, the, the remaining 10 laps or whatever it was and, and just let the wind go. Uh, you know, maybe maybe earlier on I would have done something like that, but dude, I've had too much bad luck in this series to to let wins go for for putting the bumper to someone, especially at Martinsville. So you know, I, I get it. Justin's not happy. He showed it at the end there, gave me a little door as he was on his way to the to the pit lane. But you know, it it is what it is. It it happens in the real series. It happens here. It's it's just a uh, uh, part of the uh, part of the sport. So I'm I'm not too bent out of shape about it. And there was the the incident there with Finnegan as well. It looked like it was kind of a toss up. You kind of left a little room to the wall. He kind of came up trying to get to the wall. How do you put that one yourself? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to wall myself to give him, you know, every inch of space on the bottom. I was, you can watch. I was running the same line the entire race, and and he's the car that's below me. I mean, I when I'm below someone, I always give him plenty of room. You know, not six inches or a foot of room. I give him a couple feet. Um, you know, I obviously felt bad. I, I've never had problems with Nathan. I'm not, I'm not going to squeeze him or anything like that. Uh, you know, they were, they were looking for me to claim an AOL, an EOL there for that incident. But I mean, I, I tuned into the broadcast on the side and I, I saw it and I'm like, dude, that just looks like a racing, racing incident there. So I wasn't going to do, uh, you know, I wasn't going to put myself to the back of the field for that one. And I don't think that, you know, I'll get an EOL post race for that. At least I don't think I should. Um, but I guess we'll see how that shakes out. Opinions being opinions. You do get a race win. Reason to celebrate for sure. Um, honestly, I'm going to throw my hands in the air. I don't know what's going to happen as, as far as penalties. Hopefully it stands because it, it was definitely Martinsville, as you put it. Uh, this completely changes your season. You're down 12th in points, tied for 11th, coming up through all this bad luck, trying to navigate this and that. But you do finally get a win. How much of a load off your shoulders is that? Oh, it's huge. I mean, I know that I should be, you know, top five, top four. Um, and I believe there hasn't been more than five race winners. So I think that this will put me there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't think there will be any problem uh, with, you know, penalties at the end of this. But even if there was, you know, I, I'm so confident in myself right now. I, I think I got the speed to, to win any given week. So... If I, for some reason, get penalized for this one, I'll come back next week, and I'm sure I'll be fast enough to have a shot. And there's a lot of races left, so as long as I get one before the playoffs, I think I'll be fine. Well, Vincent, congratulations. Race win, 100 laps led. Certainly can't say you weren't there this evening. And, well, Martinsville fashion, you go to victory lane. That was entertaining. Congratulations. Hopefully we're talking to you again soon. Yep, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I think there will definitely be a lot of polarizing opinions. I think... Mostly on one side versus the other, Zach. But again, I have to give him, hey, he went to victory lane. That is Martinsville stuff. You, you do hit people usually. Um, I'm not going to say I would have done the same. But, uh, you know, maybe I know we called Bissonette kind of this series. Ross Chastain earlier in the season. Uh, he's definitely taken maybe a Kyle Busch villain role here.
like Zach had to step away for just a second, but we can go ahead and grab. Sorry, no, 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 oh. I'm back. I'm sorry there, Andrew. Sorry. Um, family discussions. I apologize. There were a um, few things that needed to be discussed. I apologize for stepping away. I'm back now. I am all in, and I caught, like, the back half of what you were saying right there. Well, here comes second place, Kyle Purcell, and we'll grab our second place finisher, Kyle. Um, long day for sure. Yeah. <laughs> You had so many shots there uh, to, to get by, and you did it really cleanly. I, I give you applause there. What did you see, though, in those last 50 laps or so? Uh, you know, I needed a lot of cautions, in all honesty, because my brother and I pit on lap 112 and flipped the second, the end of the second stage to get back to the front, and we didn't pit again. So we were uh, more than half the race on the same set of tires, and you could tell, especially when guys like Gloria or you know Lockett caught up, so I was just like, I'm just going to try to maintain, the hold the bottom, and hope that they either crash or really struggle to get by me. And then Loria and Michael were mixing it up. I thought I might have a chance. And when that caution came out with everyone wrecking in turn two, I thought I might have been clear of uh, or ahead of Loria, and I had a chance, but it was close. So really just a you... really, really fun race for me at the end, at least. I want to give you some credit because even though you finished second tonight, you are one of the few drivers on this racetrack tonight that still had a relatively clean race car. I mean, Andrew, back me up on this. That car looks pretty freaking uh, immaculate, really. Absolutely. And I was just about to ask, Kyle, you were in the center of that controversy with a 6787 without being one of the cars in it, I guess. <laughs> I, what in the world happened there? How do you, I guess, move on from that? Well, I saw that Laura was being aggressive with the 87 and... I was like, man, if they get into each other too hard, I might have a chance to dip low. And sure enough, they kind of were. And then I got through. But I know Michael tried to punt me into the 67 in turn two. And then he lost it doing that. And uh, after that, it was pretty clean to the end. And I, I do want to point out, though, like, or at least shout out the people around me at the end for the most part, especially like Loria, for example, that were on newer tires or were just faster in general. At least with me, I felt like everybody pretty much raced me clean. Nobody was really moving me at the end, which was nice because I was fully expecting to just get run into in the back over and over at the end. But, you know, I think that we kind of all knew that I was slow. They were fast. If we can get through clean, it helps both of us. And in a race with a lot of cautions and a lot of take and not a lot of give, it was nice to see some of that, at least at the end, among the people at the front. Well, new paint scheme gets you some good luck, maybe. Congratulations, Kyle. Good to talk to you. I think it was you that had the... Uh health issue going on at one of the races we try to talk yeah um, yeah <laughs> well glad that wasn't the case this evening glad you're feeling better let's talk to you some more later this season absolutely thank you a lot guys and zach here comes our third place finisher also a zach lockett goes third place in wild fashion yeah it wouldn't be the first time that i've gotten the chance to interview another zach that has been turning some solid laps on the racetrack you started 21st tonight and you end the race third i mean yeah. What do, you, what do you take away from that, really? Because with all the commotion tonight, it, you probably could have thought that you might have ended up in one of these wrecks. And again, we just commented on this with Kyle Purcell. You are one of the few drivers on this racetrack that barely has a scratch on that next gen Camaro. Yeah, man. I um, I, I have no idea. I, uh, I I don't think I attempted really to like pass a car all night. Like I was like, I'm. I played strategy. I went and pit a little bit before the um, end of the first stage, found myself up in like 12th, you know, after running back in the 20s um, and then really was just just chilling there. And then all of a sudden I found myself in the top 10 and wanted to stay there because um, I'm, I'm a big advocate, especially in this league, just for for stacking pennies. You know, I, I, I figured I did not have speed to win this race, but had speed to stay around that five to 10 spot. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm content here and um, ended up avoiding everything to stay there and then that last lap where finnegan spun and um the 72 and whoever else got into the wall i was like holy crap i'm about to come in third yeah battle of attrition to say the least we we did say quite a bit about that early on at the start of the broadcast that it was going to be a battle of attrition tonight and you have certainly proved that more than most tonight like i said you started 21st you end the race third i mean did you think even for a second that as the tussles and commotion started going on at the end of the race, hey, I might have a shot to win this thing? I I mean, once Vince got up there and, you know, he's he's very skilled. I know he's a little bit aggressive, but 
I, I knew there was going to be uh, some commotion up there. I thought, you know, I honestly thought maybe I could come home with a podium uh, or maybe the whole field will wreck. I don't know. But um, this was just this was just like a lucky the, one of the luckiest runs I think I've ever had, because like I said, I was not pushing cars too much. I don't think at least I hope no one thought that. But um, I, I maybe I don't know. Like, I don't even know what to say, because I just did not expect this at all. Well, you put in a stellar performance tonight. You were there at the end when it counted and you were able to bring it home, get some solid points. And hopefully that helps your playoff chances even more. And. I think we all can say we look forward to seeing you next week at Texas. Yeah, thank you, man. This, now we, we start getting to these mile and a half and these bigger tracks. That's where I think I can um, compete, at least for, you know, continue to compete for top fives. And like I said, man, stack pennies. I think without my um, Coda, I, I didn't run Coda. I was 10th in points, now back in like 15th-ish. So I think without Coda, I'm, I'm about top 10 in points. So uh, stacking pennies, make the playoffs, and then hopefully uh, turn it up from there. Definitely. And congratulations once again on your top three, man. Take it in stride. You did good tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back lock, it goes third place. Been talking to him a lot recently. It really is good to see a good guy and get a good result at the end of this one. Um, I Zach, relate with that stack and pennies part. I relate <laughs> with that very much. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there. I I guess let's get our, our closing statements out now because it's still fresh in our mind. I know exactly um, what you're going to start talking about here, too, Andrew. I, I think all the viewers can understand where you're going to be coming from as well. I am still shocked by everything between the 67 and 87, and I, I don't want to get too critical here. Um, I'm going to keep the professional broadcast hat on as much as I can. Um, I've been very, very defensive for Vincent. I personally do not approve of the way he won the race but zach he has a great point that he he got it in the martinsville style right i mean i i can't disagree with that it's it's martinsville he used the bumper i think to a very aggressive and extensive degree but he's he's not wrong um i mean it's it's tough it's 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 really not a situation I expected this evening. Um, for us, though, right? All we have to do is talk about it. It was entertaining, uh, beyond entertaining, and uh, you know, for that reason, I hope nothing really changes. I think I think the result hopefully stands. That was one of the most entertaining finishes I've ever seen. I, I'm a little bit taken aback. I, I don't think I was fully, you know, I exciting commentator there at the end. I'm just, I'm still shocked. I, I've never seen those kinds of uh, bumps because he didn't dump him, Zach. He he didn't crash him at all. He he bumped him, bumped him, bumped him just really dang hard. Yeah, I think I think the overaggression was very apparent. Uh, we've all seen the bump and run. We've all seen how these drivers are able to use the bumper and take advantage of how these short tracks are with the braking zones. And, you know, just that's where the bump and run comes from. Just break a little deeper, use the car in front of you as you brake, and just move him and get on by. That's where it comes from. And I think to an extent, it's justified when it comes to how it's used. To an extent. Now, when you dip into a little bit more uncharted territory where bumping becomes slamming and slamming becomes dumping, that's when we start to say, well, that might be a little too far. And we saw that when... 67 of Loria got into the 87 of Michael. It sent him way up the racetrack. He was very loose. He had to regain control of the car. And it, it all just went downhill from there. Now, that didn't cause the caution, though. That's the crazy thing. That didn't cause the caution. The overaggression to get back to him and give him the same treatment, that is what caused the caution. And we have to take a look at that and say, well... At some at some point down the line, you got to draw where it's racing and where it's revenge. I don't want to take the Benny Ham. That's short. <laughs> I guess that's really the Joe the Gano way out. Um, well, Hamlin said it. It's it's short track. I, it was entertaining as hell. It really was, and I, that is good to a point. I think it, it kind of boiled over a little bit, and I think 
Vincent was very honest about why, because admittedly he has gone through the ringer. And that's why we've talked about him so much. He really has been through a lot this season. I don't know that it was warranting of that at the end, but um, he wanted to win. He saw a chance to win. He went and got it. I think that has to be respected to a point at the very least, right? Saw a win, possible. He went and got it. That's that. He, he went and got the win. It's going to be interesting to see kind of how things go from here. Um, but I think we've probably each said our, our P's and Q's. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what's upcoming for us. Of course, uh, this series is next in action in a week's time at Texas Motor Speedway. Completely different racetrack. I would be interesting to see if maybe a few shoulders are given there, uh, given that it is much higher speed and one of those area racetracks. But on each side of that, flanking that broadcast, uh, we go to New Hampshire this week with the SRA, SARA, Sim Auto Racing Association, Pierce Fleet Service Super Series, Super Late Models of New Hampshire. That's going to be fun. Then they go to Slinger a week later. Zach, a lot of great racing coming up. And Thursday, not Thursday, Saturday evening, I'll be calling a race and not on iRacing. I will be down at Anderson Motor Speedway in Anderson, South Carolina, and I am pumped. Uh, Pit Road TV. Guys, it is a pay-per-view service, $24.99, but Pit Road Worth TV. It. It, it is. Tony Pit Stevens Road. does an absolutely great job with it. Yes, pitroad.tv, um, Southeast Super Trucks, so sest.tv. We've got Southeast Super Trucks, which are trucks on late model chassis, um, along with their limited late model series and a few other support classes. I'll be myself and Gerald Legend Harris. Cars. I Probably, more than likely. Um, so a lot of great racing broadcasting coming up Saturday. Hopefully some of you guys can get onto uh, pitrow.tv. We should have a live look in. So at the very least, that'll go out on Facebook. And, um, that'll be available. But yes, it's going to be a very fun week um, for sure. And April is, is the start of some pretty big things. Zach, big thank you for being here. Um, where can we find Pitstop TV? Well, uh... I'm actually, I'm going to do a little fun thing tonight, Andrew. I'm going to time myself because I run through this every single broadcast. And I'm going to see just how fast I can do it. So as you're tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Pit Stop TV. And there's all these great places that you can watch along. Facebook.com forward slash Pit Stop TV. Instagram.com forward slash Pit underscore Stop underscore TV. Twitter.com also X.com forward slash Pit Stop TV underscore Twitch.tv back on twitch finally after so much time off of twitch we're back on twitch twitch.tv forward slash pit underscore stop underscore tv main place to watch pit, pit stop tv the great place to watch pit stop tv youtube.com forward slash pit stop tv one and then the newest place to watch pit stop tv kick.com forward slash pit stop tv one that is 31.73 seconds i think that's a personal record you're gonna be in the broadcast booth for anderson motor speedway you said this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Next week, I should be able to attend due to the fact that Road to Pro should wrap up this coming Thursday on the 11th for the Sarah Super Series. But might have to miss Slinger because I'm going to be doing prep work because I'll be back in the Legend Car Friday night at Wake County Speedway on April 19th. On Real Racing coming up. It has been a pleasure. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure, Zach, to have you back here with us. Hopefully you're here for a lot more, if not all of the season. I know it's tough for you, but, um, you know, with your racing schedule, it, it has been a really, really good day of racing. I know this one went on a while, and I, for that, I have to thank my uh, amazing fiance, Kayla Rondo, um, soon to change at some point, for, for tolerating me sometimes and, and tolerating this hobby that I have that is I Where's recent broadcasting. my wedding invite? <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll be coming at some point. Um, don't know when, but one of these days. But again, big thank you to her. Big thank you to our partners, including her, actually, CC's Business. That's her deal. Um, but a big thank you to Applied Sim Cams, ATVO, CC's Business, and everybody here at the Icon Cup Series and the Icon Racing League. All of you drivers, I know tonight we, we got some critical viewpoints for sure, but we really do love all of you guys. It was a wild day, and that is Martinsville Speedway. Wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching along. It has been a pleasure. Hang on. Let me tab over and get my nighttime Martinsville B-roll ready. I wasn't expecting a nighttime finish, but hey, the lights came on, and uh, things got exciting for sure. Here we go. Roll it. Nighttime B-roll. Love this place with the lights. Uh, also, quick look at the schedule. We're back. Texas next up, then Talladega, Dover, Kansas, Darlington, so on and so forth. That's what you have to look forward to. It's been a pleasure.
Big thank you to the use groups at the bottom as well. Zach, thank you for being here. My name is Andrew Carter, Nolly the Fourth. Rambling at this point, I know. What a crazy night. Thank you all again. We'll see you at Texas.